All right. So um, while I'm setting this up, I can talk about the context of why uh, I think it was primarily me that wanted to have this conversation, or at least I had some some statements I wanted to make mm -hmm. about how I felt a at least some of the some conversation, but primarily a two month old conversation you had with Mr. Girl Destiny Lav uh, went where I felt like my issue was that if you had been presented information that led you to the conclusion that you might be hurting people with your content, that it wouldn't influence you to change your content because it felt like you were using the fact that you don't prescribe your worldview to mm -hmm. other people as a shield that mm -hmm. protects you from the ethics of your content mm -hmm. um now i'm not saying that anything you prescribe is bad i might talk to you a little bit about um some of the positions you have on your uh, levels and bubbles and stuff like that because i actually don't know where you currently are with that mm -hmm. um it's just i got the sense that if there was an issue that it wouldn't be uh properly addressed um by uh it seems like your ethical system are are, um, are we saying the levels is an ethical system uh or my personal no, no, ethical no. system like britney's ethical. your your okay, your yes. personal ethic system if somebody were to get hurt when yeah. you talk about the uh levels system. yeah 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 do you want me to address okay. that Sure, you can address that in the way you want, and then okay. I can be more specific if you need me to. Yeah, that'd be great. You know, one of the things I really like the question when people pose it to me, I wish they would do it in a way that actually allowed me to answer. So the reason I'm excited to talk to you is I think you might give me the space to actually answer questions. Usually okay. when I get pulled into these panels, and that was my first real panel, and this is why I don't like doing them, is I think it's a game to these people. I don't think any of them are serious about ethics. And really? so when they accuse me of being unethical, it's like, girl, first of all, we know what happens behind closed doors. It's not like I don't know people's secrets, but also mm -hmm. it's sort of the way they pose the questions are like, do you know you're killing people? And I'm like, well, <laughs> okay, mm. let's talk about this. You know, what does it mean to be an ethical person? What does it mean to have morals? What does it mean to care for your community? So I cater to a very specific community and I try my hardest always to think about and be considerate of that community. But my community is um, usually people who do like me. And if you like me, you're probably not exactly the same person who would be held to a different standard. You'd usually be like I call it the like my friend calls it the Britney filter. Like if you like Britney, you probably understand Britney. But if you don't mm -hmm. vibe with it, you might not be the content might be bad for you, if that makes sense. Um. No, I don't really understand. It can mm -hmm. make sense. I don't understand. Uh, what do you mean when you vibe with it? Like, you know, when you like I watch um, I grew up a really, really conservative religious. My parents are from Iraq. They're Catholic, very into the church. Mm -hmm. And it would trigger me because I'm a queer kid growing up in a Middle Eastern home. Right. And so I'm sitting tough, there. Yeah. It's it can be very tough. We're now good now. It took 20 years, but mm. we're finally good. <laughs> and it's one of those things where it would trigger me. Want me to like I I um. I wanted to unalive myself for like 20 years of mm. my life, right? Attempted, mm -hmm. tried it. And it was always because of existence, the bubbles interacting with me. And I was like freaking out because every message I was hearing from the news or documentaries or anything else growing up in the 90s, 2000s was that I was a bad person. I was a pedophile. I was going to hurt kids. I was going to do horrible mm -hmm. things as a gay person, right? Mm -hmm. So that would trigger me. But if I'm not a gay person and I'm not that person, if I'm in that bubble, I'm probably not going to get triggered, right? So I, instead of focusing on who has the truth, because I don't think most people have any truth, we just have beliefs, I tried to say, does this bubble cater to your joy? And so does my bubble, my con content crater to, crater to your joy? And if it doesn't, that's okay. If it doesn't cater to you, find someone else who can communicate with you in your language because I might trigger you for just being myself. In the same way, my whole life, the world triggered me because it just was themselves. And so I learned to stop asking other people to change for me. And I learned to just find the bubbles that actually I could understand and that didn't want, you know, didn't make me want to kill myself <laughs> or mm. unalive myself. I don't know how I should talk on Twitch. Can I say, should I say unalive? I, you, you, no, okay. I think you can talk about that. Um, 
if it's like your lived experience in yeah. past tense. Okay. As cool. long as it's not like a current thing. Yeah. You're fighting. Um, but uh, okay. So <clears throat> I guess then I wanted to talk a little bit about when you at the beginning of that you you are referring to people who you feel like don't really care about ethics and just want to say you're killing people. Mm. Um, Specifically like let's... Mr. Girl. I don't think he's consistent enough with a value system to have the audacity to come for other people's. Uh, yeah, we could talk about that at some point, like what you feel like he's inconsistent about, mm. but I don't want to go down oh, yeah. a, a route before we uh, go down specifically what I wanted to discuss with you with that. So when it, so let's say I approached you with the same um, thing. I don't, I'm not going to, I have no idea about the, I have no idea about the ethics of what you prescribe or don't, well, I guess don't prescribe. <laughs> yeah. um, I, uh, so let's assume that I did though. Let's assume that I had the opinion that you were genuinely hurting people mm -hmm. um, by, I don't know, uh, your statements about level ones. Let's mm -hmm. just say I conjured a hypothetical argument that you are hurting people because there shouldn't be level ones in your system in the way that they are. Mm. If if I had that argument, um, it felt it felt like to me watching the content that you wouldn't engage with that argument any further than I'm. It it feels like your typical response is something along the lines of human get a human, or I'm making, I'm not making prescriptions, um, and so uh, I'm not really gonna. It felt like you weren't entertaining um, ideas that you could be in the wrong mm. about how you present that information to people that could cause people to feel worse about themselves, self harm, or become depressed. Mm -hmm. So if, if I made the argument that your level system caused people to become depressed or self-harm or self-terminate, what would be your response? Like beyond, let's just assume that I had a point and we disagree on, mm -hmm. um, what, what would be your response? Do you feel like you have an obligation if people are being harmed to, uh, or self-harming, I should say, to, uh, change your rhetoric? Um, kind of. So I okay. have my set of values. I just re like released, I think is episode 71 of my podcast, really great podcast about how I wrote out all my values. And then I present them to people and I ask people what, what, um, in these values do we like share? And then I decide in which way to talk to someone. So I cause, um, like harm reduction is always the goal. So it's not mm -hmm. to erase harm. It's just to harm reduce, right? Dr. Mm -hmm. Lindsay Doe talks about this on YouTube. I love her channel. I've seen her live at events. And she talks about this where harm reduction is more realistic because someone's joy is someone else's like harm. So what I try to do is present my joy. And if my joy causes you harm, then we need to have a conversation about consent and then your ability to remove yourself from a situation. And then my ability to be open to, within my values, changing my language or owning up to a wrong. Like I was pro proven wrong uh, that ones can change. Cause I had a caller okay. who was someone who identified as a former one. And she, you know, she's on this journey of like four or five-ness right now. And she feels like she really was a one. And though I uh -huh. never saw her during this state. So I've personally never witnessed a one going from a one to two to three, four, five. But if she tells me this is her life, then I 1000% believe her. And that proves me wrong automatically, which I've stated in all my podcasts and everything else. As okay. a content creator, though, here's where I went on your opinion. I struggle because if I take down that original levels video, it feels like I'm hiding. No, I don't think you should take it down. No, yeah. why I think not? It was wise to keep, I think it was wise to keep it up because it, um, I think it provides uh, a measure of, I don't want to say accountability as if you need accountability, but uh, I feel like it's a bit heavy, but that's kind of what I'm getting at. Yeah. Is that um, it shows uh, that you've changed which mm -hmm. I think is more important and you've grown, which is more important than like taking it down. I, I don't know. The problem is you're going to get criticism for either. Right. Um, 
you're going to get criticism for taking it down because people are going to say you're hiding the truth. And then you're going to get criticism for keeping it up because there's going to be people who um, lash out and think it's your current opinion. And then yeah. when they realize you've changed, they're going to go like, well, why didn't you take down the video if you don't believe in it? Right. right. Um, so it's it's kind of a lose-lose on that. But I think keeping it up is generally better because, um, yeah, it just shows growth and that people can change in the how – uh, opinions even of people that you might respect um can can differ over time yes so. i think okay so that's why i kept it up because i was like oh i'll do the i called the philip defranco thing where philip defranco keeps up all his old content even the shitty bad takes and mm -hmm. i think it's really nice because i hate feeling like i'm hiding stuff it makes me feel icky and so yeah. i'd rather just like be criticized i suppose i don't even mind that people think i still hold bad opinions but i would like an opportunity to explain that i no longer hold it and that i have yeah. been and i am so open to change my whole worldview is you should change if it leads you to joy and for me changing always led me to my joy because i just learned things i didn't know before so of, of course mm -hmm. i changed right but i mm -hmm. can understand that for some people you ever meet people in politics who go oh change means you're lukewarm <gasps> change means like yeah oh you're flippy floppy and it's like well i can't win now bros yeah like i can't it's, win yeah it's um uh, i've talked about that pretty extensively um i think as much as i disagree with the brother Hassan, i think that there was some treatment towards him that felt that way um wait him being who he, um he, well sorry his son oh his son uh yeah sorry um his son I feel like at moments got some treatment mm. where he changed his opinion and then people said that he was like, you know, lacked conviction mm -hmm. in his points. And it's like, we got to pick a road, either yeah. one road where we enable people to be infinitely stubborn or we enable people to be um, at least appear flippy floppy and, and change their opinion pretty rapidly yeah um to to environments we have to be you know open now obviously we, it's not that we can allow people to be infinitely flippy floppy but like the amount of it just feels like whenever somebody changes their opinion we shit on them um but when, when it's that doesn't make any sense we i think we're just that. afraid we're afraid that maybe they're fake changing their opinion or yeah well, what if they're like you know trying to like what's that called a whistle what's that called a dog whistle dog whistle like maybe mm -hmm. they're trying to like trick us and i mm -hmm. understand that in a world where we're all tricking each other yeah i mm -hmm. get it which is why i said to that panel you all think i'm doing what you're doing but i'm not here for the same reason you're here because i used mm -hmm. to be here and i used to be very political i've marched i've done things i've signed people up for voting i used to be so in it I loved politics at one point in my life. And now I don't even remember what dog whistle. Like, I know what it is, but I can't even. Mm -hmm. I've just erased that bubble from my brain. And I'm focusing on philosophy now because I feel like what I got from politics, I got. But it it didn't lead to actual joy. It led to understanding a system and the corruption of the system. But it didn't help me as an individual not want to kill myself. Mm -hmm. You know, so I uh, had to find a different method. I, um, I've had... I guess kind of the opposite mm. journey. Um, really early on, I uh, got into what I would consider to be philosophy. Mm. Um, and I very much enjoyed it. It actually got me out. Um, I would say got me out of my depression um, because I was very much depressed for um, four to five years uh, from like age 15 to like, 1920 mm -hmm. um and uh that mainly came from a um i forget what the word is it's like uh apathy mm -hmm. um i didn't want uh to have the uh, money or houses or anything there wasn't really it seemed like anything that i could be offered that you know that this people could give me that anything could give me yeah. um but when I really was thinking about it, I developed a very big fascination for uh, thinking about what is important in life. And to me, it, essentially, long story short, I came to the conclusion that for me, what makes life worth living is just not being a bad person. Hmm. That's it. I don't, I don't want to necessarily be a good person. I just want to not be a bad person hmm. um, and doing it. I feel like the only thing that people need to do is just actively try to discover what it means to not be a bad person. Not even just actually not be a bad person, but just do your best 
to figure out to, how to not be a bad person. Even if you fail at it your whole life, as long as you're trying to figure out how to not be bad or not do bad, I think yeah. that's it. I, th um, I like that a lot though, but like obviously, mm -hmm. so then, okay, so then my brain goes, well, yes, I love that. But then since everyone has a different version of what is a bad or good person, which brings the struggle of chaos because the bubbles mash up together and like the vegans think this is the answer and the religious think this is the answer and then this is an answer. Mm -hmm. It's so hard. Like it's because I have so many complicated and interesting people in my life that are, you know, humans are all the same to me. Like we're all human problems are all basic problems, but they're important and nuanced and beautiful and complicated all the same. So I have people in my life that are so good, but then they'll do things. And I'm like, whoa, why did you do that? And they're just like, I don't know. It felt like the right thing to do in the moment. I was like, did it? And then mm. we have to have those conversations where I have to be patient or they have to go away or we have to meditate or we have to decide like, wow, that's a pretty shitty thing to do. Like cheating on your partner is pretty shitty. Let's talk about why you thought that was mm. a good idea at the time. And the thing is, is like no one gives a space for people to actually have that conversation, right? Because I Everyone knows Brittany's very dramatic when it comes to cheaters. I really hate them. But I think, like, I really get upset. But yet, I still offer a space, especially in my calls, to be like, yeah, let's talk about why of cheating. Like, mm -hmm. I fucking hate it, but let's talk about it because it happens. And it happens for good reasons. <laughs> like, quote, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Yeah. Okay, so do. how do you how do you come to peace then with the idea that you know, like, your your goal is great. But since everyone defines good differently, how do you make peace with the idea that people, because they think it's good, will like punish their LGBT kids? Um, I come to peace with that because um, as long as they're trying, as long as everybody, because I think in general, it's a pretty agreeable goal that a lot of people have to try and not be a bad person. I think yeah. a lot of people are trying to, and you're right, there many people are trying in a way I would consider to be unethical or bad. Mm -hmm. um, I think as long as they share that same general movement away from what is considered bad, I then just need to appeal to certain things that they can appeal to that are bad. So yeah. um, uh, when they, you know, we might not agree on whether the ethics of being gay with like certain conservative people, right? Um, but one thing we can generally agree with is that if you, if you treat gay people poorly, all of society kind of sucks like yeah. it suffers um and so you know things become less ac uh, accessible people become less productive um and so i can appeal to other things that i know that they care about um to be able to appeal to it being bad yeah. the way that they're doing it. so that's kind of my outlook if i cannot make a case that is reasonable that is uh uh, tangible for why it is uh, wrong that most people can appeal to, why it is wrong to do any kind of thing I consider to be bad, homophobia, um, classism, whatever it is, um, then I don't deserve to be talking about it is my kind of opinion. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. if, um, or at least with that individual, yeah. I'm, I have certain I have certain people that I don't talk to because I'm unable. Like I don't often talk to um, genuine white supremacists yeah. because uh, I I can't I I'm not used to engaging with that kind of argumentation. Mm -hmm. um, so I I leave that to you know other people that are more capable. But um, like a conservative, I can appeal to jobs. I can appeal to. Um, the fact that you know gay people make up such a crazy amount of the workforce to try and have, push them out yeah. and make them incredibly less productive self harm it, it just doesn't make logistical sense even For sure. to do um and so i can appeal to those things and then i can obviously appeal to the uh, humanity of it but they I, I feel like that's not um i feel like they get hit with that argument all the time so i'd be yeah, it depends on the person. It uh, depends on the, yeah, short. for yeah. sure, right? Like you're trying to, I feel like I do that when I'm bubble hopping. I'm like, okay, what bubble do they live in? What's their belief system? How do I use language that doesn't scare them? But then I don't always see people and I have a really mm -hmm. short, like I have an issue around certain personalities where I'm like, I don't know how to like build compassion for you, bro. Like I don't know how to suffer with yeah. you. So like, yeah. I'm just gonna like, like you said, leave this to somebody who's better equipped because mm -hmm. like I can't. So just to clarify, because I say this all the time and I'm curious, would you agree? I think most people are good. Um, I would say, I would, um, I don't know. I don't know if I agree. 
but I wouldn't say that most it depends on you would have to explain what you mean because from my purview I think most people are probably doing bad mm -hmm. um but I don't think most people are bad like well-intentioned maybe yeah I think most people are well-intentioned I don't that. think many people yeah I don't think many people go through life like yeah you know I want to fuck shit up today no <laughs> people don't do that yeah um um but I, I think when people go about their life, I just I think there's a lot of people who don't really understand um, some of the things that they're doing to other people. Yeah. Um, yes. And saying to other people, but they mean well. Yes. I think generally speak. Totally. You know, it's funny. I was visiting. So I'm like I said, I'm Middle Eastern. My cousin, his parents, one Middle Eastern, one white, got married. And mm -hmm. I went into his room one time and I was like, what is this? He's like, it's a Confederate flag. I was like, why is this in your room? <laughs> I was like, you're Middle Eastern and you're not. like, he's like, but my other side's white. And I was like, oh, <laughs> I'm cracking up. But I was like, bro. And like, he's like 12 years old. And I'm just like, what yeah. is this? And I'm laughing and I'm like, I don't. So I'm looking at my, like my uncle and I'm like, you're Middle Eastern. Your wife is white, but why would you have a Confederate flag in your fucking house? Like, and I'm sitting here like, what is this? And honestly, they just, I don't even know what their justification was, except they're like, yeah, we're from like Virginia. And it's like what we do. And I'm like, I guess. <laughs> but like, I, I'm related to them. They are my first cousins, but like, I have no mm. connection to this. My parents are both Middle Eastern, to be fair though. Mm. And so I have no white side to it. Like, I wouldn't even think, I, I didn't even know exactly what the Confederate flag was outside of high school mm. until I was old and in activism circles. And I was like, okay, which one is this one? This is the Confederate mm. one. Got it. Because mm. it's not part of my bubble, like to know that my parents, I don't even know if my parents could, would know what a Confederate flag was. So mm. it just, isn't that fascinating? Like my own blood relatives. And I'm like, I guess, mm. I guess, you know, whatever. Is this your, if this is your road. So I'm a heavy believer in like the journey. And I just think people go on them. And I think in the same way that people have to go on quote unquote bad journeys, there's the counter and the people who are going to be there to defend. Let's say the bad moment in other, someone else's life is a good moment in theirs. So that's kind of mm -hmm. how I see it. I do think you have an obligation within your value system to stick up for the like poor and the weak and the humble and the people who need help, right? Mm -hmm. And at the same time, I think a lot of people identify as the poor and the meek and the un the people who need help when they don't. So that's the mm -hmm. issue is who's scamming and who really needs mm -hmm. the help? Yeah. You know? Um, yeah, no, I, I agree with that. 100%. Uh, it's very difficult to be able to um, ascertain how that works. Um, I think that, um, yeah, and I think that appeal that you're referring to, the obligation towards those people, that's what I kind of consider to be a part of my my duty, so to speak, mm -hmm. as somebody who talks about politics is to be able to articulate that to as many people as possible, um, the necessity for that. Um, and if I can't do that, then I need to recommend them to somebody who can or find an easy way to integrate them into a community of people who can. Yeah. Um, uh, so, yeah, that would be I would agree with that. Um, but like, can we get back to. What I wanted to please uh, specific okay so um, let's say that um, it might be a good example um, your changing of your mind about what you said from the I think it was like a two year old video three year old video I, before um, the but the start of the, about the start of the pandemic I shared the levels video. Okay, so right about the start of the pandemic video that you had about the levels. Um, and since you've changed your mind, that would be a good place to start. I recognize you've changed your mind. Mm -hmm. I, I'm like what happened when you told me during the YouTube stream. If mm. you change your mind, you change your mind. I, Which major respect. Like yeah. you don't understand how much that energy made me go, I got to talk to this man. Because mm. like this man mm. understands people change. Like other people mm. do not understand people change. So I actually really, really appreciate that. And I'm happy to change because I have a one in my life I love so much. And I was so worried. Like what if he can't change? But the fact mm. that I now have hope for even my own inner circle, like I'm so happy mm -hmm. about it. You know, what a blessing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, that's, um, yeah, it's yeah, like, I, like we were talking about you. You have to, if you believe that. And people changing their mind, you have to be ready to do that. Also, it's yeah, it's just a normal thing. People do that. Mm -hmm. So you change your mind. But let's assume, let's kind of dial it back to when you you hadn't changed your mind. Let's say that I had 
people, evidence of people that were um, being hurt by what you said, either self-harming or falling into depression or whatever. And I presented that to you. Mm -hmm. Similar to what you said was, I believe the individual coming to you and being like, I was a one and I changed. If I came to you with that information by proxy, mm -hmm. just the idea that it could happen, mm -hmm. not even the person themselves, but just the idea that it could happen, would you, would that enable you to change your mind? Or was it only mm -hmm. the, the fact that an individual came up to you and was like, I have, I was a one and now I'm not. Great question. I'd like to believe because I've been this way my whole life. So I think it's an accurate statement. My viewers can hold me accountable for this. I'm pretty sure that I'm always open to anything that is true. I'm reluctant to change my behavior if I don't see a direct positive result. Okay. So if, because I find it to be like, well, why do I have to change if you don't have the evidence that it's going to matter? Yeah. But then mm -hmm. it could matter for one person. But then I wonder if it's a cope like, oh, I, I watched porn and that's why I cheated on my <laughs> wife. It's like it feels like a cope. Oh, uh -huh. I, I saw this thing. And so I made myself hurt myself. It's like, was it the thing or was it the underlining issue? So my brain wants to be very specific about this because I know for a fact my mom tells me on a regular basis I harm her with my language and my only fans. <laughs> So I'm trying to be very open to the fact that maybe some people could feel like I'm harming them and they could just be like my yeah, mother right. or they could be genuinely like Brittany, please. And I'm like, okay, let's talk about it. So I yeah. think for me, I'm going to have to like interact and interact and interact. And I hopefully will have the discussion even live so people can see how my brain's my brain works. So yeah, I'd like to say that that's my answer. I'd like okay. to say that I'm open always to change, but it's hard for me to want to budge. Um. Okay. I, I imagine that'd probably be the case, especially for a lot of people, um, especially for people who, um, who, uh, do online interactions and interact with or online politics and stuff, because I think there is a lot of people that want to change, um, intention wise, um, and believe that they can change or, or would want to I'm not sure there's too many people that would say what you said about like, well, well, I'm not sure how successful it would be or that you um you want to but you don't you don't know how that would exactly work mm -hmm. materially but i think there's a lot of people that would share the sentiment of like yeah I'm, I'm cool with changing um so if you are open to that um why maybe we should get into the so m let's try something a little bit more specific let's say i had five dms from individuals that self-harmed because of your talk about level one level ones would you have to would you request to me that you go through those individually and that you look at them mm. or individually before you think maybe i am doing something wrong what if i presented you with 20 what if i presented you with 40 um it's a great question I, I, oh, I'm so such a curious person. I think I'd want to. Okay, so I've done this in the past. If viewers have problems with me, I've offered them group calls. I've offered them group conversations. I've offered people, like, if you think I'm some cult leader, I've done something bad or unethical, I'll talk to you about it. So my Discord people openly criticize me, openly talk shit on mm -hmm. me. Like, you know, if you, I want that to happen. So I think I'd want to read the letters and maybe talk to the people, but I've interacted with a lot of people now. I've been on in the internet 12,000, 12, 12,000, Lord, 12 years. Mm -hmm. And one of the things I noticed is like, people will love my work, love it, love it, love it, love it, love it. But the moment they see one thing that like ruins their perception of me, they're like, oh my God, her whole work has been bullshit this whole time. And I'm like, whoa, buddy, okay. So my mm -hmm. concern will always be, what am I really dealing with? Am I dealing with a genuine person who is genuinely hurt and I can fix it or a person who's hurt and I can't fix it? I will always want to fix it if I can fix it. But mm -hmm. I don't know that I'm always capable of fixing it because I'm not sure that I would agree on reality with them. That's my biggest issue is like, I don't, I think we all live in different realities. So sometimes when people come to me and say, Brittany, don't say that, that's offensive. What I'm hearing is we don't live in the same reality. Because in my bubble, this isn't offensive. Okay, so that was, I think, going to be another thing that I was going to talk to you about. Because it felt like in that conversation, there was an issue where when 
people referred to some of the things that were primarily Mr. Girl and Lav referred to some of the things that you were doing as, but you and Lav are like cool now, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. We're cool. Yeah, yeah. Okay. But um, either way, uh, it felt like there was a lot of pushback from you off of the idea that um, because they were invoking such strong language towards you that it was just necessarily wrong. And it, the vibe that I got from watching it was that you were apprehensive about any kind of ethical pushback of, uh, of any kind, because it felt like you would use arguments of things like, well, the, you know, they see it that way. They're trying to impose their ethical system onto me. Mm -hmm. Um, and I wanted to discuss with you about the idea of imposing ethical systems on other people yeah. in the prescriptions, because uh, I would say that's kind of a part of um, what we talked about earlier with the conservative who believes that gay people are bad. It, and I have to then impose my ethical system of actually, I don't even think by many of the standards that you have, that it would be that they would be bad yeah. right and so i would i would consider that a way of pushing my ethical system onto another person do you disagree that's pushing your ethical system on another person when you make arguments like that when you try and combat that narrative yeah i, I think that is like i think that's what we're all doing we're all okay we're all hoping to some extent that people think more like us and i i mine's a little bit different i think people should think like me in terms of my openness, but not in terms of my conclusions. Okay. So I don't care if someone comes to a different conclusion and believes in a God, as long as that God mm. doesn't then allow them bypassing the law and like killing or stoning their children, right? So like, let's talk mm. about that. But I don't have a problem with them technically coming up with the idea that God is real, but I, and I don't want them to think like me, but I think that it would be nice because it would make my life easier if they did. <coughs> but I don't really need them to. I just need them to stop being violent and stuff. Like, you know what I'm saying? So I think I'm more focused on how do I get people to be less violent? And that um, is a much different job, right? Than convincing people to think like you. I think it I think it often has overlap. Yes, um, I agree. So, I mean... The way that I view it is that when during that conversation, it, it felt like there was a big issue with pushing ethical systems on other people. Mm -hmm. And I agree that people do this. Um, mm -hmm. I will I say, I will say I was, I was very defensive that day because I don't know Lav. I didn't know Lav. And then Mr. Mm -hmm. Girl. So I don't take them seriously as thinkers. I should say that. Okay. So because I can't take them seriously because they, they don't have a value system. I can't okay. rely on Lav to give me the same answer every day. And I like Lav. I can't rely mm -hmm. on Mr. Girl to give me a consistent answer outside of his own scope. I mean, his idea of even thinking Steven's his boss is so far removed from reality to me that I feel like I'm not talking the same language, right? Mm -hmm. So I do not respect them as thinkers, no offense, which means I cannot actually take their criticism seriously because I'm like, look who's asking me these questions. Okay. So that's a little um, bit on me. That was me being defensive for sure. Okay. Um, then, but I'll I like just... you. You can ask me the questions. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, good because uh, that kind of saves us the bizarre thing where I'm going back to a conversation yeah. we're not even having. Yeah. Um, and I could just ask you, um, let me blank some questions then. Um, so let's say that I make the statement that I like pushing my ethical system onto people who I feel like are doing bad things. Do you believe there is a problem with that? Yes. Okay. What is the problem? Only that you could be wrong. Okay. If I recognize I can be wrong, what is the issue with pushing my ethical system onto other people? Nothing. As long as they're aware they could be wrong. Same with me. As long as we can say that we were wrong, as long as we go, then I think with the best intentions, you should go forward. Okay. Um, do you think that there's a lot of people that don't believe that they can be wrong exactly. when they push you do no yeah i agree i don't i think people don't think they're wrong okay or could be wrong oh. like okay. there is no reality where my parents and i love them are ever going to be wrong about catholicism never mm. there is no reality 
There is no do, option. Mm -hmm. Do you think that Catholicism might be unique as it's a faith um, rather than um, something more material like, mm -hmm. um, I don't know, a statement that black people are less productive than white people? Don't you think that th those two statements are a little bit because convincing somebody that they're wrong about Catholicism yeah. is going to be probably a lot harder than convincing somebody that of yeah X, Y, and Z. Yeah, I think oh. so. I, I like actually I pr appreciate that comparison because I think we are in the secular world mostly dealing with those controversies. Like what does it mean to be a good community member? How does it mean to treat people mm -hmm. of color and all that stuff? So I would say that I feel a need to counter people's bad ideas that I deem bad. <laughs> mm -hmm. But I try to do it in a way of like, oh, why do you think that way? Like, what makes you think that? Now, I, like you, I don't know very many and I don't interact with any like white nationalists or anything like that. So I don't hang out mm -hmm. with people that are very race focused. It makes me super weirdly uncomfortable because I'm so ambiguous racially that I mm -hmm. don't know how to operate in these conversations because I'm not white enough or brown enough or this enough. And so I think that's a great example of when given the opportunity, it might be a good idea to say something, but I don't think you're obligated to at all moments. You know, when you're in the store and you see someone who's saying shit and you're like, oh, should I fight this person right now? Or should I just get my milk and go home? <laughs> that's how um, my life feels <laughs> where I'm like, do I want to pick a fight right now? Like, mm -hmm. like with a person wearing a pin. And I'm like, so I had to make the decisions to pick my battles. And I don't think people do that very well. And I don't think people know why they're even picking them in the first place. Like, can I ask you a question? Here's something that befuddles yeah. me. Why is Ethan from H3H3 H3 mimicking Elon and then baiting Elon into petty tweets? Like, what, what's um, the psychology behind that? I don't. I, I haven't seen that. Okay. I, so I, I'm unaware. It's like stuff like that. I see humans doing things that they're like, this is what we have to do. These are bad people. And I'm like, but why are you doing that? Mm -hmm. What is that going to help any marginalized community like getting suspended on Twitter? Right. Mm -hmm. So I always want to ask people why they believe things. And I don't think they know why. I think they mm -hmm. think they know why. Oh, why do you believe this? Because I'm black. Why do you believe this? I'm Catholic. Oh, mm -hmm. why do you believe this? I'm gay. And it's like, that's not an answer. Yeah. So yeah, I want to know the why. So, yes, I, I love, you know, I live on the Internet. So if someone brings me an idea, of course, I want to counter it. I just. As a Britney, I don't care what people think. Just don't fucking kill people, don't rape people, and stop firing people from their jobs unjustly. But that's, okay. you know what I mean? That's asking too much of humans already. Yeah, and but so I guess then, because it sounds like you're doing the same thing I am, but you're saying you just don't want, so you're saying you don't want people to, you know, be violent, to potentially ruin people's lives by firing people unjustly. Um, so, but what's the difference between saying that when you do and me saying that I want to change people's or uh, push my ethical system onto other people for better outcomes? What's the difference? Uh, there might not be one, but let's give this as an example and you can tell me if it's different. Like when I get a caller who says, hey, I'm super religious. I go, great. What's your religion? They go, um, X. I'm like, great. I research X and I go, cool. What's the dilemma? And they go, I want to date my boyfriend, but it's anti the religion. I'm like, okay, let's talk about that. So within the rules of your religion, this is what you're supposed to do. How do you feel about that? It's not Brittany in that moment saying, fuck religion. I'm an atheist. You should be one too. It's me coming to them, them coming to me and saying, okay, where are you at? I don't need to tell you not to believe. But I can still help you within the the mechan or the what's this called like the barriers of your own bubble, yeah. you know. So is that the same as what you're doing, or do you if you had yeah, a person no, like that, would you want them? To no, I'd uh, I'd give them the same advice as you. Yeah. Um. Yeah. That's, I would say that. Yeah. So did you ever grow up in the really atheist bubbles, like Sam Harris, like Richard Dawkins bubbles? No. Bro, I went straight into that after the church. I went church to mm. atheism and they are all about conversion, recruiting, mm. changing people's yeah. minds. And I'm just exhausted by it. I was it as a feminist when I was marching with BLM. When I did all these things, I was like, you know what? <laughs> okay, I'm not going to get everyone to agree on reality. So can we just agree mm. not to kill, rape, and fire people unjustly? And no bad arrests. Okay. So, so then mm -hmm. I, I think I understand a little bit more what you're referring to when you um are making or trying to talk about the difference between people that push their ethical system um i think when when i'm hearing you explain what you consider to be pushing your ethical system on other people what i'm more of thinking is pushing their way of life on mm -hmm. other people 
in every aspect of it because like um i think you can be a good person from many different angles or just a not bad person from a lot of different angles you can be you know a host of religions and whatever i'm mean, still not do terrible things but um so yeah that's where i'd probably agree with your approach and do an approach similar to yours so um do i you, guess that's good do you think i come off different or like not reasonable to people because i don't like what am i doing different now that i didn't do i mean obviously i was super defensive think, in those other things but like... I, I think i think your defensiveness is what kind of put up red flags for me mm. um i think the language is a little bit different than what I'm used to. When I hear like you talk about people, it's bad that you want to push your ethical system on other people. And I'm when I hear things that are like that or statements mm. uh, like that, I think, well, yeah, of course I want to because um, I'm appealing to what you described as um, uh, uh, the way that you go about life, not the way that you describe pushing ethics on other people. And my, my thought process is, of course, I want to push my ethics on other people because otherwise there is no way to have a civilized a civilization. Mm -hmm. There is no other way. Because if people, if 100, you know, 99.9% .9 of people want to like kill and rape people, I have to be able to go, you're wrong to do this. Yeah. I have to be able to push my ethical system onto other people. Um, and uh there's just no other way right um How i would you... say that sorry go ahead. go ahead okay i would say that we're doing that actively with uh like what we talked about with the uh lgbt community um we are pushing an ethical system onto other people but it's one that fits their already pre-existing um um their pre-existing uh, um like framework uh, arguments oh, yeah mm -hmm. arguments for for a good civilization mm -hmm. a place where people can live free can have freedom of movement freedom of uh you know uh um, opportunity yes. and stuff and it gives other people opportunity outside of the, the lgbt mm -hmm. community as well um mm -hmm. and so i think that is that is is me pushing in, in the lgbt community and pushing our ethics onto other people yeah i shouldn't say are i'm not a part of the community yeah but, oh, okay. uh, and i don't but i and i yeah i don't want to like necessarily say that fucking i'm a part of a community that i'm not a part of but i'd like to believe that i'm you know pushing a similar towing the line in, I like, in a similar way i like this method like I, okay so in the past i had to ask myself like am i willing to die for this because so dramatic like that's what my whole family's mm -hmm. like you should die for christ you know i'm like are we gonna die for mm -hmm. this and then i had to make the decision like i don't think i should need to die for this but i think i can give better arguments so that's what i do with my conservative family is when they're like anti-something i'm like let's talk about taxes let's talk about mm -hmm. how much gay people pay into taxes let's talk yeah. about how much or the fact that out of the 10 kids my parents had, three of us ended up coming out. So I was like, let's talk about. Wow, wait. Yeah. It's a hell of a ratio. <laughs> no, oh, that let me tell you. And like, that's that's what I'm trying to say to my parents is like, I like that you needed to have kids for you to get a little cooler with your kids. But mm -hmm. they struggle. I see it in them. But wow, the changes they've made. But it was not easy. It was so mm -hmm. hard to get my parents to just be chill with us saying we were gay. And now mm -hmm. it's like, okay, they kind of cringe a little. Like they'll cringe. Mm -hmm. But they're like, okay. And like sometimes my mom will call me and say, Betsy, can you please get your brother out of the gay lifestyle? And I'm like, oh, <laughs> yeah, let me work on that. And like, obviously, yeah. that's not what's happening, right? Mm. So even today, I talked to my mom about birth control. Oh, my dad was so upset. He was like, you're already sick because I have lupus. He's like, why are you putting things mm. in your body? I was like, I promise mm. you, I talked to my doctors. This one's a good one for lupus. I promise. And they're like, but what mm. if you die? And then my parents, if I die, and it's not even about my birth control, my parents for the rest of their life will be activists talking about how birth control killed their daughter. Because mm -hmm. they, there isn't a reality in their brains where the birth control didn't kill me. Yeah. Yeah. I know. I already know exactly what you're appealing to yeah exactly I, I know the type of person you're talking about mm -hmm. um and they're great they're lovely wonderful people they like they're such good community members but yeah they uh <laughs> they that's just who they are mm -hmm. um okay so yeah it feels like a lot of the statements or, or arguments that i had about the way that the conversation you had with mr girl and lev went um are coming down to 
um, semantic errors, I guess, mm -hmm. or um, differences in description based on the way that we were uh, communicating. So you would agree that if I define, um, if by my definition, pushing my ethical system onto other people is trying to work with them where they're at and trying to appeal to, you know, certain values that pretty much everybody shares, um, that it's, it is a, at least neutral thing. Would you agree with that statement? Yeah, I think so. And neutral is a little like without flavor to me. But yes, I think that and I think that's what I'm doing. I actually really like that you said that because I'm like, oh, okay. finally. But I think that's the problem is I don't know why that seems like a reasonable method to me. But then people still fall into the whole loophole of, you know, like you have to be on my side. You have to believe. Ex and I'm like, I don't even need people to exactly believe. But we need to decide are our values, honesty, transparency, justice. Well, then none of the things we're doing in the system reflect that. Right. So I think that's the problem is like when I look at the system, which I'm not very good at like tackling, to be honest, I'm better at individual tackling. But when mm -hmm. I look at the system and I see that it's broken, I also see that people made it. And I'm like, well, then people are broken. Let's talk about why people are broken. You know, mm -hmm. let's talk about it. I don't know if you saw this panel that I just did recently with ABBA and Destiny and stuff, but it drove me a little crazy because I, they said like people are lonely and they said it's because of OnlyFans and porn and video games and Netflix. I'm like, you're blaming the cope. What does the cope have to do with the reason? What made them want to cope in the first place? And then they said, well, Brittany, you only figured it out because you're the exception. Irrelevant, am I the exception? Am I so much better than all of humanity that I'm the only one who made it out? Or can I'm, you know I'm what gonna I mean? be I'm gonna be perfectly honest. Tell I me. remember that conversation. And yes, I no, think you are. irrelevant. Do not agree with them. <laughs> I, I think you are. I think you no. have a I think you have a above board understanding of sex and how to engage in um relationships online in a healthy manner based on your description that a lot of people don't a lot of people don't understand how to engage with um online content creators with online personalities in a healthy way let alone sex workers but i had to fuck um, up think, a lot like a lot 12 yeah, years of fucking up yeah, well, I'm, I'm not trying to say like you're, you are always this way. Okay. What I'm trying to say okay. is that, uh, and I don't think they were either. I think um, what you're trying to say is where you're at right now, you are you are an exceptional individual, um, uh, and uh, just based on how I've seen people interact with people online and engage with online communities, um, I mean, you have people that are experiencing um, such terrible uh, mental health mm -hmm. outcomes as a result of, you know, hearing that Amaranth had a husband. Like, why? These people, there's people breaking down mentally because that, n not because the husband of anything the husband did to her and mm -hmm. just the mere fact she was in a relationship mm -hmm. um, is, is causing them severe mental distress because they, you know, had an idea of this individual prior yeah. that, yeah. And I think that is, um, mm. I think that's, uh, I think that's more common than people think and not just with sex workers or anything like that. I think that's, um, that kind of parasociality, uh, lives in a lot of online, well, just, uh, it dip, not media in general. Um, I think it happens even in our neighborhoods. Like when you don't even have a neighbor, like, okay, my neighbors don't know what I do, right? My neighbors have very different versions of me in their heads. Like there are a billion Britneys in the world, depending on how many people have seen or interacted with me or, or understood me as a person, like a consciousness, right? So my neighbors don't know what I do, but I wonder what they would think if they knew I was doing like YouTube and OnlyFans and I was stripper pole in my house. Like, I wonder what they would think. If Would that change who I am to them? Would they treat me differently? Would they be shocked? It's like we do this, we objectify everybody around us, including our own reality. And then we're shook when it faces us, like when we're faced with reality. It's like when your kid comes to you and goes, mom and dad, I've been having sex. You're like, oh. I thought you were this perfect yeah. child. I never knew that you would do this to me. And it's always like to me, like the world thinks we do it to themselves, like to them. And I mm -hmm. think that I'm more interested in having conversations about like why loneliness does occur. And I think it's because everyone wants to see and be seen and be loved and understood. And if we don't have that in a society, like people are reporting mm -hmm. loneliness in marriages. So what the fuck does mm -hmm. loneliness have to do with OnlyFans? People are alone um, even when they're partnered. Like they're alone even when they have a partner. I think the problem is 
at least with OnlyFans. Um, or I, because I wouldn't even <clears throat> directly attach this to OnlyFans. Mm. Um, is people are using online interaction as a substitute for real life connections. But what if it's um, real online? Do you get what I'm saying? Like, it's no more fake in real life than it is online. I don't believe it. I see people every day in real life who still struggle to make friends and socialize. They're just as fake in person. Um, I agree that people can be just as fake. But um, I think having somebody that you can be around, that you can talk to, um, that you can uh, hang out with uh, yeah. IRL can be very good for people. Um, I think that... Um, Online interactions often will lead to a more fickle way of um, uh, of, of interacting because either, let's say, um, with the example of OnlyFans or online content creators, uh, you could have a great like interaction with any of these people, and then be banned the next day mm. because you they were heated yeah. and did whatever and then you're completely cut off okay because that relationship wasn't a real relationship where um there was like a mutual thing going you, you were more of one of the chatters or one of these people and i think that's the way that online content creators see it but they sell it as something different where it's like more of you're more integrated into the community than they um th that's what they say um but i don't mm. think that's really how it works i think there's a lot of like welcome to the family welcome to the community like that's why i didn't i said it wasn't exclusive to only fans yeah I think it is super predatory um ludwig uh had a thing a, a very popular clip where he said as much as i love all of the the uh support i get from my community none of you are my friends yeah. none of you are friends with me in any way shape or form because i think there's a lot of people and i think his appeal to that speaks a lot because i think there are people that treat it that way yes that is it yeah when that isn't the case and i think that is the same kind of negatives that can come from like only fans except only fans people um, what might use it as a substitute to relationships like mm. sexual relationships or other whereas typically non uh, um, sexual content is used as a substitute for friendships in communities um, yeah but you can have like friendships in the discord and stuff and i believe that there's friendships that can brew there um and i've literally seen discord friends move in with each other and yeah you know, um do stuff like that that you know i've seen that um, firsthand some of my friends did that mm -hmm. um fuck i did that with um darius from destinies oh really uh and you know, i moved in with him for a little bit uh he gave me COVID. Uh, he gave you like the drug he, no covid oh co i thought you COVID. said coke i was like oh like the drug <laughs> <laughs> no he gave me he gave me covid i'm so sorry uh, to hear that yeah that, that piece of shit no he's um yeah um yeah, I, I think you can do that and you can make meaningful. I think, you know, we're good friends and shit. So I think you can make friends yeah. inside of that community. But yeah. I think that people typically um, with the creator will have an unhealthy relationship. I think most people will. I struggle with this so much. You have no idea. Like I am on this like journey now of figuring out how to describe to people what I want from them without miss communicating what I want from them because I use the word friends so loosely and I'm like yeah friends like I have hundreds of them and everyone's like what does that mean I was like you know your neighbor's your friend your grocery clerk is your friend you talk to them every day I mean like you see them all the time like what else like what are you supposed to say like we're not friends Barbara and it's like fuck I don't want to hurt Barbara's feelings mm -hmm. like but obviously sometimes like my accountant she was like do you want to get coffee outside of work and I was like Thanks, girl. I'll hit you up if I feel like it. But right now I want to keep it mm. profesh, you know, because mm. I was thinking about it. Do I really want to talk to you outside of this or do I like that we have a professional relationship? <laughs> right. And now mm -hmm. my bestie who's been to my house, who knows my family, he was a caller six years ago mm. and he became okay. my best friend. I definitely think I was meant to meet him. He's one of the best people I've ever met in my whole life. And mm -hmm. I look at that friendship and I will never, ever take back any of the oopsies that have happened on my channel 
the, at the chance of not meeting him. Like I, I, my life would never have been as good if I didn't meet him. Right. Um, I met my partner through the online communities. I met like mm -hmm. so many friends, like people that I meet, I'm like, you're going to be an auntie to my kids, bro. And that mm -hmm. happened because I, I've been an online content creator. Now over the years, I fucked up. I've miscommunicated closeness with people. I don't know how to explain to people that I find humans fascinating in an observational way. And I think everyone is great. So I can't be friends with everyone. But people mm -hmm. think because our conversations are so fire in the calls that that means I'd want to hang out with them in real life. And though that's true, I do want to hang out with them. I do not want to hang out with them over hanging out with my sister. Mm -hmm. So if my sister's not available and my inner circle's not available, then yes, homie, let's go. Let's get Chipotle. Let's hang out. But okay. they, I want people to understand I have my inner circle, my inner outer circle, and then my people that we just know. Like people in okay. the world, right? So I try my hardest to communicate. But what do you think like it is other than a language barrier when when I communicate and people don't understand? Like I had one person who was like all about my content, my work. I thought we were going to be like friends, but not like 2 a.m. call friends, not close friends. I can't take on the burden of their problems. But, you know, friends, like adult friends where we talk about philosophy and ideas. But then the mm -hmm. moment I couldn't like offer them more emotional support, they became like a hater. And I was like, oh, I'm mm -hmm. so shocked by this behavior, except I know that it happens because I my parents, I don't know if your parents are like this, but my parents don't have friends like they have cousins mm -hmm. and family. And then they have people they know that they call friends that they only see every 10, 20 years. But they don't have um, friends except for cousins because your cousins are your friends. Yeah, my, my, my mom has some friends. Yeah. Mm, yeah, some, some real friends uh, because her work mm. kind of demanded it um she had a um she worked as a secretary and she um uh, at a school she you, you know, know what worked with a bunch of people that's mm. a great point my parents run a business so they're with each other all oh. the time so yeah. actually maybe this is the problem in my because my bestie's white and her mom has friends and they do like nails and brunch stuff and i was like my mm -hmm. mom would never like <laughs> never like the idea of doing that sounds so funny to my parents because they're like we have the love of our life right next to us why would we ever do that and so mm. i grew up in a bubble where your friends like it's a privilege to live next to your friends first and foremost none of my friends live near me they all yeah. live in different states oh that's so unlucky. yeah adulting is buying plane tickets and visiting everybody once a year because mm -hmm. hello so i also now i do hoard my siblings because i have 10 of them okay so i do keep like three of them live with me right now Mm -hmm. And I want them to live with me until my three. Yeah, three. I have three boys. How big is your fucking house? Jesus. Um, we're I'm actually renting a townhouse. It's three bedroom, three bath, seventeen hundred square foot. And my third brother lives in the loft, <laughs> so he doesn't even God have a damn. room. Damn. But we grew up our whole lives with each other. We love each other so much. We also live in a small town of six thousand people. We've moved out of the okay. city into a small middle of nowhere place um, okay. to have, for privacy and funness. So yeah. So our family, we moved together. Now, I understand we're all leaving soon. They're all going to leave me. I'm in a committed relationship. I hopefully will move in with my partner. So, like, I don't want to live with my, like, brothers and him. You know, it's going to be weird. Mm -hmm. So, like, they're going to have to move on. But I told them they have to stay with me until he moves in because I'm too afraid to live alone. And I have that mm -hmm. luxury because I've bonded mm -hmm. with my family and maintained relationships and gone to therapy and worked on friendships so we could do this. But there wasn't always this harmonious community with my family. I went five years without talking to them. I disappeared. I was like, fuck all of you. I hope you all burn in a fire for being anti-gay. And then I came back and I was like, y'all were pretty cool. Y'all like mm. anime. Y'all listen to good <laughs> music. Why are we fighting? And that made me realize like I was the problem. Like I was the person who wasn't, who said she was wise, who said she was introspective, who said it was smart. And yet I couldn't make my family get along. Mm -hmm. And so who am I to ask the world to get along if I can't get my parents to get along with my their kids, you know? So, so all of that to say, I'm so sorry. Thank you for letting me monologue. But all of that to say is, I think it's so much more complicated, but intimacy is so sought after that it's going to be take heavy communication to know what we're doing together. Like Kyla from Not So Erudite, do you know who she is? Yep. I negotiated in private my relationship with Kyla. I was like, what kind of friend do you want? How often do I have to talk to you? What is the expectation mm -hmm. of this friendship? How many people do that? And I only do it because I was- I think. I think you're the first person I've heard of do that for a friendship. Really? Okay. I think yep. it's a really good tool. And I learned it from BDSM. I was in. Well, I mean, you know I think I mean? It, yeah, I think it can be for sure a yeah. good tool. But I think that kind of plays into the previous thing of like, I think the way that you interact with people online. Mm -hmm. And it seems, I imagine you probably do something similar. Hold even. on, Irrelevant. I'm so sorry. Hold on. What? I'm streaming. streaming. I'm collabing right now. I'm, this is very rude. 
Yimshi, go. Yella, go. My, I wanted to show me a TikTok or something. <laughs> go ahead. Wait, you you speak a different language? No, no. Oh, I No, okay. my parents speak Chaldean, Sudith, and Arabic. And then I picked up one or two or five words and I pretend I speak uh, languages. I do not speak. Uh, no, I suck I like, with language. It's really bad. I, I love people that can speak more than one uh, language. Wait, can you? Uh, no. Fuck, that's, that's why I, I would envy like it. Them. Uh, I envy them. Yeah. I love that. Um, <laughs> yeah. Uh, no, okay. So, um... What was I saying? I'm so sorry. I don't remember. Uh, Friendship, quite. intimacy, um, yeah, connection. So, um, this is part of the reason why I think you're more on the exceptional side, mm -hmm. um, because I think what you described is a good way for a lot of people to be able to be on the same page going into a, any kind of interaction. Mm -hmm. Um, and it kind of pairs with what you said earlier or what you were referring to earlier. Like, do I think it's a communication issue? Do I think it's, I think it is a bit of a communication issue, but I think there are plenty of people that if you communicate the realities to people, they'll kind of cope mm. about um, um, how the interaction works. Like, I think there is a lot of people that have been told and really like, drilled into them that they're not going to have a relationship with any content creator they see even beyond the only fans content creators but i think they can hear that and still think i have a chance totally and still think i right and so it's a consent um, issue right what do you mean like they don't think about they're not considerate of the person's consent they're just thinking i'm gonna do what it takes and you're gonna listen to me whether you like it or not they're never thinking oh would she like this would he like this is he saying this should i assume he doesn't know himself well enough and i'll do it for him like when britney mm -hmm. says guys i'm in a committed relationship is she really saying I need you to get me out of this committed relationship. Like, are mm. you, so they're not considering Brittany. They're just selfish and I don't blame them for thinking, what do I want? What can I get out of this? So yeah. even if the content creator puts down hard boundaries and I try very hard, we're open, but with boundaries on my channel, people will misunderstand it, which means they are the problem. Um, I would say in that relationship. Yeah. If you communicate plainly and clearly. Oh, the, I see. The, Versus the, the ones who kind of pretend they have boyfriends, but they're not your boyfriend. Um, I kind of, uh, that's, that's a bit of a different okay. one. I, I think people who say they don't have like, are you talking about like only fans people or sex who, workers in general, like who like do the boyfriend or girlfriend experience, like um, that can be hard, but see that clients want it. That's the problem is like your client wants you to pretend you're single because that ruins the illusion that you're not available, but that's what you're paying for is the illusion. But then some people mm -hmm. want more. Like I've had this happen where like I've made friends with people off the internet and they'll say, I understand your boundaries and then they'll cross them. I eventually just block them and say, well, that was that. You know what I mean? It is what it is. Mm -hmm. So don't you think when you go through life, you're just trying to figure out who your actual people are and then who you are. And as a consumer, you have to figure out what kind of a consumer you are. Yeah, I think so. But I also think we can learn from other people's mistakes and stuff that that we probably should try and do um, a little bit more. I okay. would say that I personally have learned from other people's mistakes mm -hmm. in many different ways by watching other people's content and engaging in, in thinking about how their shortcomings of the things that they've done. And I've tried to learn lessons before, um, you know, they get taught to me, so yeah. to speak. Um, and I think we can do that with, um, you know, um, these online interactions where people are getting, have a toxic uh, relationship with how they view online content creators. Totally. I think there can, I think we can preemptively go like, um, you know, Amaranth's not into you, even though she, you know, said that she was single or there was an implication that she was single. She's not into you. And then when people, oh, it's like, oh, okay. But in reality, they're like, nah, she's still kind of, she's still kind of, it's like, no. You, yeah. you can she's really not into you like that's well she doesn't even know you like she doesn't yeah. know yeah you in the way but then okay here's the problem i know so many sex workers because they're people that fall in mm -hmm. love with their viewers because like you want your partner to love your work like actually it's a rule i ask people i'm like you see my only fans yet and if they go oh i would never i'm like date's over mm -hmm. how am i supposed to okay. respect you in this relationship if you don't respect my work enough to buy it to like know what i'm doing to be curious about the person you're dating like mm -hmm. not every month, but like at least once, aren't you curious about the person you allegedly are attracted to? 
Mm-hmm. Right? But then uh-huh. you get the other side of it. And I have gone on dates with OnlyFans viewers. One, he asked me out via OnlyFans. And I said, sure. Like, I'm looking for a husband. Maybe you're him. I don't know. Mm-hmm. He wasn't, but he could have been. But um, most of them are not going to be. So I understand what you're saying, but I think like both realities exist at once. So how do we decide which one we're dealing with? I think I think you, I think you can recognize that it can happen, that it does happen, mm-hmm. that interaction, while also um, playing carefully from both the creator side and the individual side to not get invested in that being the reality for even a a one percent of the people who are watching um because i i feel like with these uh experiences with these um uh types of content and i don't even i really don't like the um narrative that it only happens with sex workers Mm. um but um, we'll talk specifically about that just so we, we can do that. But um, the the idea that, you know, I don't think individual people should be paying for the content with that even in their mind as a possibility. Mm. Um, because I think if they do, that's how we get the, the um, potential uh, uh, severe negative uh effects on mental health for the uh payer because they have an expectation or a hope that something is going to happen and then when it's not filled you know when it's not gratified or reciprocated um they lash out yeah um either at the content creator or at themselves and i think both realities are bad so um i'm not saying we should hide the truth that the the reality is that some OnlyFans create or some you know uh, uh, online sex workers or uh, you know relationships with sex workers can develop as a result of the content or anything. Right. I'm not saying we should hide it. What I'm saying is that we should just try to go into these relationships not with the expectation or even really the hope. That it's going to happen. I agree. Just like if it happens, it happens. Yeah. Okay. Um, but this is in order to have the mentality, I think, of I'm going to um, live in this moment and let it be what it is. Maybe we're close. Maybe we never talk. Maybe we connect. Maybe we don't. You have to be open to something organically happening outside of your ego. You have to allow the other person's consent and a consciousness to have a space in your own fantasy. And in order to do that, you have to humanize people and, and, and including yourself. Like you have to be compassionate to yourself and say, I'm a great person. I am wonderful. And maybe I connect with this person, but maybe they don't have the spoons to talk to me every day. Maybe I'm not meant to be with them long term. Maybe we're only meant to know each other this moment in this depth, right? What are the spoons? Oh, Spoon Theory was created by a disabled activist who tried to explain that every action in a normal person's day that they don't pay attention to could take a a spoonful of energy from another. So for me, like brushing my teeth takes energy from me. It's very hard for me to brush my teeth. I do. Why it is that? I, oh, I hate the smell of mint and it makes me gag. And so I have like this really uh, like just like a resentful attitude towards having to brush my teeth. But then I love the feeling of it after. So I've been mm-hmm. experimenting with like I have like five different toothpastes I use all different variations mm-hmm. of like tastes and smells. And I'm like constantly trying to figure it out. But it takes so much energy from me. So right. that for a normal person might be like no big deal. But for me, I'm like, whew. Like streaming, I don't know how Steven does it every day. Doing it once a week Mm. literally takes so much of my energy. But then talking to people on calls, easy peasy, lemon squeezy. It's like Mm. my fuel for life. Well, other Mm -hmm. YouTubers are like, how can you talk to people one-on-one? Oh, that's the best. Small, Mm one-on-one, good energy. That's the best. You know, so everyone has a different thing. But that's what spoons are. Spoons just like representation of energy. And think about how many Um, spoons you have a day, people. Because everyone always gets negative five and then they crash and they wonder why. Because we didn't respect um, our energy. I think that um, that's a good reference for something that I agree with. Because mm. obviously what you stated exists with the spoons. Um, I just never really had a simple word to put it in. Yeah. Um, that um, there's certain things that people do that are identical to what I do. But just they it takes more effort from their side to be able to do it like you talked about um brushing my teeth is like a just such a 
absent mind. I don't even really think about it. I just do it. Yeah. Um, and it, it just happens. But for other people, that isn't the case. Um, and that, you know, can go for anything. Yeah. Any, anything at all. Exactly. Um, and so, yeah, I agree with that. Yeah, uh, that nuance that exists or that uh, individual particular thing that exists in everyone's brain. I want everyone to think well, before they message someone on the internet thinking you're going to be besties. Are we going to be besties or is it just something in my brain that makes me feel like I understand this person, right? Mm -hmm. I just I, – I ask myself every day, Brittany, how do you really feel about this situation? And I do talk to myself a little crazy where I'm like just checking in. How does our body feel? Now that I have chronic illness, I have to think about like am I allowed – to do this like I want to walk the dog but can I walk the dog and in the past I never had to ask myself that question before mm -hmm. so I don't think people are asking themselves enough questions before they do because they didn't I think they that's didn't have probably to. true mm -hmm. yeah I think that's probably true um okay so I guess then in regards to the to the statement about how you interact with online content creators versus um, the average person. Do you think the average person um, interacts with online uh, content creators, not even just like um, online sex workers or anything? Do you think that people engage with online content creators in a healthy manner? No. Sometimes. Do you, okay. So what did you... What did you find disagreeable about the point that you're an exceptional individual that you and the people you're around seem to engage with online content creators in a healthy way? I think holding them up to my standard would be unfair because I have tools other people don't have. So I think that unless they're willing to get those tools, I just can't even hold them to that standard. And so I have to put up with them as a content creator. I don't know if you know this. Do you know I had a stalker who was a girl? I No, I haven't heard anything about that. Okay, I did a go, go to court over this. And this was a woman who reached out to me for help. And then I was like, mm. I met up with her and I went home and told my ex-partner at the time or my partner at the time, I said, she's giving me very bad vibes. And he goes, mm -hmm. no, there's no way, really? And I was like, super bad vibes. I don't know what it is, though. I can't actually say what it is. Then she ended up infiltrating my social groups. Then she showed up to all the events I was at. Then all of the people in the group were like giving her a lot of empathy and sympathy because she was like disabled, allegedly, and all these things, mm -hmm. right? And I was like, she's crazy. Don't don't you guys feel the vibe from her? And everyone's like, no, Brittany, you're insane. I'm like, okay. Then all of a sudden, she accused multiple people of rape. All of a sudden, we're in court with restraining orders. All of a sudden, there's 12 people coming out with stories about how she tried to like scam them out of money and accuse them of sex trafficking. Then, then, mm -hmm. then, then, then. And I realized in that moment, because I had to decide if I was going to kill myself or not, it was really mm -hmm. hard. I was like crying on my dad's shoulders. I was like crying in my mom's lap. I was like, oh, my God, what, what's happening with the world? And my mm -hmm. parents said, you need to stop helping people. And I said, the fuck? Mm -hmm. That can't be the solution. Mm -hmm. So I made it a point to make sure that that wasn't the only answer, that I couldn't just help people in my own way. And it's not the best way for everybody. So I don't think I'm the exception, meaning no one can be this. I just think I did the path that everyone was telling me to do. Be patient, read books, go to therapy, do the work, get a good job, do the things, and maybe it would work. And I felt like it did. So I, I don't like the idea that I'm exceptional. When I did the thing, everyone told me to do anyways. Like, I don't think this statement me exceptional means that nobody else can be like you. I think the statement exceptional means that it's unrealistic to expect people would be like you. That's similar fair. But then why do okay. we want people to change? Or why do we feel like then we have the right to now force people to change when I'm like, but they weren't, They, you guys aren't even willing. The same people that are complaining they're lonely are the same people who ditch people because they vote differently. Like, I don't want to hear it. Like, I'll hear it. I'll work through it with you. But you have to know why you're doing what you're doing. Like, you don't, um, you know what I'm saying? But why, how can I force people to know, like, want to know why? I can't. Uh, so then I just have to accept that people are people. Maybe. Uh, Maybe it's a little too okay. passive, though, of an answer. I, what I'm referring to when I talk about, um, I guess I, I don't know what you mean about the lonely people thing there. Um, it's just an example of what people, when people are in situations, like they're not the mm -hmm. exception. I'm the exception. But I'm only the exception because I did the basics. And if I did, well, the basics are very hard. Life is very hard. Well, yeah, that's, that's. It's very hard. I almost killed, it, I almost died right? multiple times. It's very mm -hmm. hard. <laughs> yeah, and people are not going to go through that. Which Most means that we have to accept then that the world is going to be the way it is because no one wants to do anything different. Well, I, I think then it isn't that we have to accept the way the world is. Well, to a degree, of course we do. But um, 
I think it's that we have to accept that people are not going to on their own, um, through their own, um, uh, if it doesn't come from your own though, where does it, like, it's not real. You'll burn out. No, I, I think, I think it can be real. I think exposing people to different points of view, ways of life, how easy or hard things can be, Mm. um, can enable people to do certain things that might be seen as hard. Like bubble so popping? For, uh, I don't know exactly what you mean by bubbles, so I couldn't Yeah, like that. Bubble it. is a culture. It's a belief system. It's like if we're in a bubble right now, you and I, we're on the internet too. That's a bubble. But yeah, like I agree with you, and I think that's what I'm doing. I think I'm the only one open, though, to the idea that it might not mean what people think it's going to mean. And I think the world is exactly the way it is because humanity is where it's at. I don't think it can go any faster or slower until individuals make it go faster or slower. Yeah, but wouldn't the argument be that individuals making it go faster or slower can be influenced by other individuals? Yes, but only if okay. they want to do it. Yeah. And, and only if it's real a... and authentic. Right. And I think I, in general, can try and make arguments or present people ways of life that can make them want to authentically do different things. I believe you. Um, okay. I do believe you. But think about the politicians. Think about like the tweets. Think about the Elons. Think about the H3s. Like think about the way that they're in their loud voices telling people to be, fuck the Republicans, fuck the Palestinians, fuck the Jews. And I'm like, whoa, mm -hmm. whoa. You're basically just saying fuck yourself, bro, because we are all the same. We're all people, right? But you are doing something. So you are the anomaly too then. I would say so in um, some ways. Fuck. Okay. Well, I mean, I as much as I don't like calling myself exceptional or an anomaly, I think in some ways I am. Um, I'm twenty five oh and my I God. have yeah, and I have an outlook on the world that I think is quite healthy. I objectively have one, I, I say this all the time, I'm objectively one of the happiest people on earth based on what people have talked about. I love every moment of living and I have for the last 10 plus years, even through like pretty sad moments, I'll be like very sad and I'll be like, damn, I love fucking every moment of this life, even when it's sad. Um, because I have such a rigorous emotional support system. I have such uh, mm. good relationships with friends and I enjoy doing the thing that I do for work. I yeah. enjoy doing the uh, every everything. So when, when the lows of life come through, I'm like, damn, this is still really fucking high. Yeah. Like, uh, um, and so I recognize that I am an exceptional individual in that I can deal with certain things that I can interact with certain people in certain ways that other people just cannot because I, I can, I'm, you know, more happy with being able to just, you know, do me and kind of interact with the, with the certain things in certain ways. Like an example is um, Mr. Girl at one point, stated how there was two a two week period where he was losing sleep over destiny subreddit mm. um and this has been something that uh, my girlfriend was um talking to me about for, uh, she would talk to me about how there'd be people that would say certain things about me on the subreddit and be like oh the irrelevant is x y and z or that there'd be youtube comments and i'm like Okay, well, is there a bit of criticism? Is there something I can work on in it? Um, you know, because they're bashing me. Is there something yeah. that they're bashing me over? And she would tell me and I would go, okay. And I just wouldn't care. And I would move on. Yeah. Because I would take the criticism and I wouldn't, that, that's all it would be for me is that, that core thing. They're being very loud. Whether they're being loud about, okay. And then I'd consider it. Um, and then I'd go back to doing the things that I find to be fun. Um, you know, some of my biggest stressors have been after like debates that I've had where I feel like I could do better. Um, mm -hmm. and I feel like I could improve. Um, and I beat myself up about it a lot. Uh, and you know, I take criticism from, um, specific people pretty highly. And I think that that being able to do that without, um, like, being able to do that more from a personal perspective rather than 
I feel like um, essentially what I'm saying is when I beat myself up about my performance in a debate or in a conversation mm -hmm. or just a talk between two people or, or just expressing my idea, my, my ideas on my stream, I feel like that's how people feel when other people give them criticism. And it's like, I think that is rather unhealthy mm -hmm. because it's, at least when it's for me, I'm recognizing my problems and my faults. But when other people take it from other sources, it's it's never going to stop. Right. It's, it's endless. Right. It's absolutely endless. Whereas for me, I'll take a two week, three week period and be like, okay, you fucked up here. You fucked up here. You fucked up here. And then once I figure out all the places I fucked up, then we're done. Um, it is what it is. And then I'm through the, you know, uh, kind of self-loathing period where it's mm. like, I, I took an L or something. Um, and so in that, in those ways, I feel like I'm an exceptional person who has an exceptional life and I need to recognize me being exceptional in order to understand and kind of make sense of other people's actions. Because mm -hmm. when people do stuff like that, when they break down because several comments are getting to them because destiny or um i don't know mr girl or um somebody they look up to isn't showing them re reciprocation right. or affection i can't relate with that like i i really can't so understanding that the reason why i can't relate is because i have something that not very many people have i think that's very important to do it, it, have you always had a good support system I have since I've been 15 years old. Interesting. Okay. That's, hmm. I will tell you, I got my feelings mad hurt when Mr. Girl called me a Nazi and then the subreddit was like, oh my gosh, does Bernie hate Jews? I was like, what the fuck? Like, this mm -hmm. is so offensive and hurtful. And I cried a lot into my pillows every night, but I also had been canceled by Kiwi Farms already by my stalker. So like I was used to it. So I- Oh, were they, did they go through Kiwi Farms? For you? Or like how did- Bro, when my oh, stalker, but it, mm -hmm. let's just say Kiwi Farms- truly made me almost want to kill myself in a real way but mm. but because i already dealt with kiwi farms destiny's reddit was easy peasy lemon squeezy i did cry mm. still because i'm a sensitive motherfucker okay like mm -hmm. i have feelings but i knew what they were thinking they were thinking one i don't know what an assyrian is which is what i am they have no idea my connection to like the jewish culture or relative to like the religion and catholicism and judaism so they have no mm -hmm. idea that that is so offensive on so many levels that's fine Two, mm -hmm. like and i had to go through the logic like i had to logic myself out of my feelings feelings and then remind mm -hmm. myself that like the reason you feel this way is because it feels like it was before and this is your trauma and this is no big deal let's move through it which is part of my therapy with borderline because i'm borderline and so that helps right i've had to go my whole life with dealing with really intention well-intentioned people who gave me like a chronic mental illness right like my parents are technically the reason i have borderline but also they did it on accident Mm -hmm. so i exist in a reality where they on accident and they don't believe in mental health so they don't think i have borderline they're really? really oh yeah they're really lovely they call it the switch they're like betsy sometimes you switch everyone switches we all get into moves <laughs> i was like <sighs> it's not a, it's not just a switch <laughs> it's like a full like misprocessing of reality and i want to die mm -hmm. like it's not normal um so i am used to it i deal with it in my everyday my brother literally told me the other day he's like how does it feel having a homophobe as a brother i was like you know sometimes i question your homophobia maybe it's like a cope and he's like what does that mean mm -hmm. he's like no i hate gay people i was like oh yeah do you hate the one who pays your rent and he's like well not you though <laughs> and like so you know what i mean like they they don't really hate me or hate my gayness even they're just like all fucking in their own bubbles with their own variations of reality justifying the way they see the world and it's fine just don't kill don't rape anybody don't fire anybody <laughs> mm. so like i do get my feelings hurt but i i think you're right like that's a very you are exceptional even compared to me in that regard because i do get my feelings hurt well I, I don't think there's anything wrong with getting your feelings hurt or anything um you know uh but i do believe that i, I do believe that i'm um i always talk about i think i'm i think i am more gifted than even wealthy people. I was more Ooh. gifted at birth because I was given um, a twin brother that I have a, I would say the best relationship you can have with another person, which is a um, completely untransactional, um, uh, what is it? Um, un unconditional yes. uh, relationship with, yeah. that's what I mean. Um, which is really nice. Um, that I, I don't think 
pretty much anybody really has, even with family. I think there's a lot of people that um, unfortunately don't have that kind of connection, even with their family, which is where it kind of should be relative to the, um, to, to where it can be, right? You're probably not going to get an unconditional uh, love from very many people. And so, yeah, uh, yeah, I think that is a, I think that's a large part of where that comes from. And if I were to have to lose that, that'd be very crushing to me. Oh, but, I would if all my inner circle died. So I think what you're describing is like an inner circle, right? Like unconditional mm-hmm. love, even though we all disagree with reality, we will we will have each other's back 1000%. Like my brothers, if they do anything really fucked up, they can come to me and I'll be like, okay, I'm upset about this, but I will see it through. Let's see what way we can fix this thing we've done now. Versus like, I would never ostracize them from my life. Like my inner circle is my inner circle for a reason. That's why I'm so picky about it. But that unconditional love comes from you. You began it. You allowed Mm -hmm. it to occur and you honored it. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, you didn't just, because I don't know about you, but I chose my siblings. Like, I went to all my siblings after I came back and I said, do you want to be friends with me? Do you want to love me unconditionally? Do we want to have each other's back? Or would you like to move away and be one of those families that, like, don't talk? (laughs) Mm -hmm. right like I had to negotiate with my siblings but why do you think you and your brother have that connection did you negotiate it did it is it just because he's your brother um we didn't really negotiate it we kind of bonded over life experiences that kind of presented themselves um in specific ways yes so Mm -hmm. part of the reason why we don't have a great relationship with our mother is because she would often pit us against each other and then around 13, 14, 15, we were kind of, this is why I say I've mm. had that good relationship since 15. We were kind of just like, you know, we, let's, I don't want to be pitted up against you. It doesn't really make any sense. Yeah. And so we stopped um, viewing the world that way. And instead we're like, you know, working together in a amicable, a symbiotic way is objectively better for both of us both yes. when it comes to mental health financial stability <clears throat> emotional stability every it just becomes objectively better so yeah. from that point we were just kind of like yeah you know what we're we've been through a lot of shit this is pretty difficult to emulate let's just kind of look out for each other and that's what ended up happening it was never really a hard communicated thing it was more of just like yeah, this just kind of makes sense to well, do. That lived experience is a form of communication. It might be subtle, but yeah. it's there, right? And I agree. Yeah, like the definitely. things my siblings and I have gone through, like, holy fuck, no one's ever had my back like that. Like my mental health problems, me calling my siblings in the middle of the night, like, bros, I don't think I'm going to make it right now. And one of them yeah. driving over and grabbing me and being like, you're not tonight, bitch. You know, like not tonight. Mm-hmm. That shit is so powerful. It is so beyond powerful. But I know it just didn't come out of anywhere. I know there were years we weren't talking. I know there was trouble with my brain and their brain and... I feel like my parents even make an effort now to be like, hi, Betsy, I know you're doing this thing and I don't love it, but I'm very proud of you for making money. I'm like, thank you. <laughs> it's like they, they, they're they trying. But if I really mm-hmm. ask my parents, are you happy that your daughter is spread eagle on the fucking internet? No, <laughs> they're not very stoked. Mm-hmm. And I think they have the right not to be stoked. Like I really mm-hmm. do. But I know that's very hard for people. So I think I have to commend you on just like – That unconditional love is something that I don't see very many people understanding. Like when I say it's conditional, the love isn't conditional. Maybe how much I spend time with you is. Maybe how much I loan you is conditional. But Mm -hmm. like I would never, the love doesn't shift. If anything, it gets stronger when you're in trouble because I'm like, oh my God, somebody I love is doing the thing that I wish they could have avoided, but they have to do it. Have you had that Mm -hmm. happen yet where your brother does something? You're like, fuck, don't do this. But then he has to do it. He just has to fuck up somehow to learn his own life lesson. Does that, yeah. does that ever happen? It stresses me out. It, hap- it happens, you know, both ways in our relationship. And usually what we do is we'll just be like, yeah, we're going to be there to pick up the pieces. Yeah. But we'll, we'll, we'll say, try to say beforehand, you know, this is what you're doing. This is why, I th- what I think the consequences are going to be. And when it turns out that those are the consequences, we go like, look, clearly there was something that I was saying that mm-hmm. it was appealing to some kind of wisdom I was tapping into that you didn't have. Let's talk about how to get that, you know, through to you. Um, Literally. And then, mm. uh, and then that's, uh, and then that's usually how it goes. But that, okay. Okay. So I feel like this is the, like a good example of why do you want friends? Why do you want unconditional love? Why do you want it? 
well, the symbiotic relationship is a part of it, but respect, consideration, and consent have to go into these things because you're looking at a person and you need to respect them enough to let them fuck up and love them enough to explain to them why you'll still be here even though you think it's a bad idea. And yeah. like you have to, but to know that is to know it with yourself. So I think like learning to love people started with learning to love myself and then forgiving people started with forgiving myself because like you said earlier, I, no one can beat me up the way I beat myself up. No mm -hmm. one could like, Talk my the way that I bully myself, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like Eminem mm -hmm. says, to get myself to do shit is insane. And I think if mm -hmm. I talk to anyone the way I talk to myself, I could cause them to kill themselves. But I mm -hmm. need that kind of language to move my brain into motion. So I do it in a healthy way, hopefully, like, you know, through therapy and everything. I stopped it a while ago, but when I was in it, I felt like it really gave me the tools I needed. So again, mm -hmm. I think people forget, like, all of these things happen, but they happen when you are present in the moment. And not a lot of people are present in their lives. We're not living present lives, right? Like I didn't start living presently. What do you mean by present? I felt like I wasn't living in my life, in my body for most of my life. I was living in the past, in the future, in the fear, in the politics, in someone else's bubble. And then one day I asked myself as I was high road tripping across the US, Brittany, what do you want? Who are you if the world couldn't tell you who you were? And I came up with this word and it's mother. And I was like, why do I feel like a mother even though I don't have children? And it's like, oh, because that's how I feel fulfilled. I need to care for people, but I also need to kick them out of the nest and not keep them by my hip for the rest of their life. So I'm the kind of mom that kicks their kids out of the nest. That's what I do on the mm -hmm. YouTube. My audience naturally started calling me Mama Simon. And I will mm -hmm. never be more grateful for an audience seeing me because that's how I feel. I feel mm -hmm. like people's like spiritual mom that's like, okay, bye. Kick you out of the nest. Next kid. Mm -hmm. Okay, bye. Mm -hmm. Next. But sometimes mm -hmm. the kids want to hang around. I'm like, no, 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 no. It's your time. Bye-bye. You know, because mm -hmm. I already have this inner circle I have to take care of. So I have 15 people in my inner circle. Oh, wow. That's a lot Jesus. of humans to consider. Yeah. That's a lot of spoons. That's a lot of 2 a.m. calls. Any of those people are allowed to call me at any time for an emergency. Yeah, that's yeah, that's a lot. I'm stressed, <laughs> but I love mm -hmm. it and I'm honored by it. Like third oldest of 10 kids, like I'm already the mom, but I, mm -hmm. I love my life. I would never trade my life, how hard it was or anything for, I just couldn't because I wouldn't be with the people I'm with. I wouldn't be the person I am. I wouldn't be here right now talking to you. Mm -hmm. So fuck it. I'll take all the bad shit. I'll take the rape. I'll take the everything. I'll fuck it. It doesn't even matter. Mm -hmm. But in the time when it mattered, I needed therapy. I needed communities. I needed politics. I needed bubbles. Mm -hmm. to help me feel valid in my insanity. And then mm -hmm. once I got that, I got better and everything moved on. So I, I would argue that a healthy person just can't navigate the way an unhealthy person does, but I don't think it's wrong to be unhealthy for a moment of your life. I think I, it's- I, I, I agree. Mm -hmm. But um, to bring it back to, I think what was the catalyst for this, mm. um, the unhealthy relationship that people have with online content creators um i think when we recognize that we might possibly be exceptional in our interactions with and, and to let me stray away from exceptional and when we are um uh um more healthy in mm -hmm. our interactions with these uh relationships we do have to recognize that there are people that are along on that journey and that there are ways we can communicate to them preemptively. Um, I agree. Ways to better interact with that. So that way they don't have to, because I don't believe that everyone needs to make all of the same mistakes as everyone that came before them right. to learn lessons. Of course, you're going to have to make mistakes to learn lessons, but you don't have to make all of the same mistakes that everyone has made before you. Like, I don't have to, I don't know, hit women to know that that's not a good thing to do in a yeah. relationship on, during a disagreement right? Um, and go through that. I don't, I don't have to, I can look at individuals that have, um, have that kind of behavior, have that tendency, tried that instead of relationships and realize that's not a good way to go about things before I even, you know, do it. Um, and so uh, I think we could do the same thing with online interactions with I individuals. I agree. Um, 
I do. I really do agree with this. So I so I have a model for myself. But how did you come up with your model? Because you must have one. Like I have a checklist I do with patrons. I have like a spiel that I do in the beginning of every call. I have like a thing that I do about like, are you 18? You know, I make sure everyone's 18 plus. So at least I'm dealing with adults. Mm-hmm. You know, as much as I want to help kids, I, I really can't deal with parents <laughs> like suing mm-hmm. me and shit. So like <laughs> I deal with adults. But like um, how do you – what model do you follow? Like how do you decide how to vet people or, or – I guess you don't do calls. But I mean – you must have a method for your viewers. Do you have a Discord you run, right? Stuff like that. Uh, I don't interact with my community as much as I should. Okay. Um, but um, for people, I do not have a rigorous um thing that I do. Um, it's more of like if a yellow flag or a red flag mm. pops up, then I'm like, okay, maybe we should start talking about like there has been cases where there's been people and. And weirdly enough, this happened really early on in my streaming career where there was people that were, you know, having very unhealthy engagement with my stream where they would like um, not like be parasocial with me, but mm-hmm. like, well, maybe be parasocial with me. They would um, start spilling off their life story and talking mm-hmm. to me about um, very personal things mm-hmm. and wanting my solutions to their problems. And it's like. Um, even if I could provide you with good, thoughtful analysis, I don't, it's not, it shouldn't be, nor do I think it would be um, wise for me to take on that responsibility because not only does it set a precedent Mm. that you could, or this is acceptable to do to other people, um, but also I just, the consequences of being wrong, you know, when people are talking about their depression or suicidal ideation with you, the consequences of being wrong are just way too high. Mm. So I couldn't engage with stuff like that. Um, So yeah, just red flags or things that I consider to be like, okay, now we're getting into a territory that's not really my place to talk about. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I have, um, on my Discord, I don't have rules. I have boundaries. So I have a list mm. of boundaries. And then I do the whole like red flag yellow thing because I have to like I sometimes I'll get people who are very neurodivergent and people mm. will be like, Brittany, ban them. They're predators. I'm like, calm down. They're neurodivergent. Let's talk about the differences mm-hmm. and why they feel the same to people. And I usually do have to ban good people. And I usually tell them you're a very good person, but your vibe is putting people on edge and it's not Mm -hmm. who you are it's who this group is in conjunction with who you are it's not Mm -hmm. who you are you can find a group of people that get you but in this group they're here for this reason and also Mm -hmm. on my discord just like you said the trauma dumping was getting so insane that i was like okay Mm -hmm. everyone stop you can have like a diary section on the discord where you cannot trauma Mm -hmm. dump but you can talk about your thoughts i do not read that section so i have a rule Mm -hmm. that i don't read the diary section because it's it feels a little too like Dr. K to me. Not that I have a problem with Dr. Mm-hmm. K, but it feels a little too personal. And I don't think I need to know that about my viewers unless they directly tell mm-hmm. me. But if they as community members yeah. want to share with each other, I want to give them that space. So I don't check out the diary tab and then I let them do their thing, right? I want them okay. to have a community, but I also don't want them to trauma dump. But this happens in real life. I went to an event in Colorado and I was there in Denver and this woman I had never spoken to in my whole life goes, hi. And I'm like, hi. And she goes, who are you? And I say, I'm Brittany. And she goes, great. I'm this person. I'm like, great. And she goes, oh, can I just tell you about something? I was like, sure. And then she starts telling me about her three-year-old molestation. And I was not prepared. I was like, oh, okay. We're at a Starbucks. Like people can hear you. (laughs) And I was in my, I was in my super SJW stages in those days. So I was like, hey, this is like super violating people's consent. Like people can hear you. And she was Mm -hmm. like, well, I needed, I thought this was a safe space to talk about problems. I was like, we're, it's a BDSM meetup. We're meeting up to talk about kink. We're not meeting up to talk Mm -hmm. about our three-year-old molestations. And Mm -hmm. I got like mini triggered because I was feeling very vulnerable. And at the time I couldn't handle it. But it it happens to me everywhere. Like I'll go to Home Depot, bro. And a man like came up to me and he goes, hey, what's up? I was like, what's up? He's like, my wife just had surgery. I was like, what's that about? He goes, can I show you pictures? I was like, sure. And he showed me like her foot and like how it was cut open. I was like, wow, we're really having a moment here, buddy. People come up to me all the time. I am used to this Wait, as a that, normal person. Yeah, true story. That happened randomly? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like just this, ran- this is, my family says, uh-huh. this is the curse of our family. Something about my siblings and their energy, people just fucking tell us things. 
they'll come up to us. And I know other people experience this, this because they tell me, but genuinely, I think it's my openness and my like energy of like, yeah, what's up, bro? Like you've never been heard mm-hmm. before. Let me hear you out. But when you hear people out, whether it's in real life or, or this, like online, mm-hmm. people start imagining your life together. I had a man come mm-hmm. to fix my dishwasher. And by the end of the convo, because we talked about quantum physics and um, um, philosophy, <laughs> he wanted to be my friend. And I was like, I am so honored by this but I have too many people that need me right now. And he was like, Mm -hmm. for sure, bro. It's like, it sucks though. I never meet anyone in my community that wants to talk about this. I was like, I know. But he just came to my house randomly. So what happens is when you can see people and even give them a part of being seen, they cling to this fantasy of a future together, which is so fair because that's what they are and should be looking for is a connection with somebody to build off of. I'm just not a place to build off of most of the time. But I could Mm -hmm. be, right? With the right person out of 8 billion people on the planet, like maybe. Like I could be, and that's the thing. Mm-hmm. They should shoot their shot because it could be, but then they should accept the rejection with dignity. And I don't mm-hmm. think that part is happening. I think people get angry and they get upset and yeah. they get resentful. They lash out. They lash out. And I think that's about consent. Mm-hmm. They don't believe in consent the way I believe in it. You have to, re- a no is consent. Rejection is consent. Let people reject you safely. Um. Yeah, I'm not sure if I agree that it's consent, or if it's something else or mm-hmm. what it, I haven't really thought about what exactly it is that triggers the um, backlash, maybe because I feel like it's different per person. Totally. Or must be or right? whatever. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But um, mm-hmm. yeah, I, yeah, I guess I would just wouldn't know what you mean by consent there. Um, but I think yeah, people, do you want to explain? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, I love this conversation. I think people will often come to me and they'll be like, oh my gosh, like I, I, I got rejected or I rejected someone and it turned hostile. And I'm like, well, why did it turn hostile? And mostly there's a misunderstanding of what is allowed. So men will say that they, generally speaking, will not hit on a woman unless they know they're going to get a yes. And I'm like, okay. why? And they're like, because I'm afraid of getting a no. And I'm like, why? And they're like, well, it's embarrassing. Well, why? If you believe in her ability to consent and you think about the value of that, her ability to say no is your ability to go and move on to the next person, right? If you think about them and the person you're asking, hi, I would like an, an adult who's had a whole life and you're an adult. Would you change your whole life for me and come join me on an adventure? That's a big ask. Mm-hmm. And you have to allow them an ability to consent yes or consent no. Um, so I think what you said about, well, why, if they reject me, um, I don't know. So I, here, I'm just going to say what I feel about that. And you'll tell me if you disagree. I think when somebody communicates to me the fear of rejection, um, I understand it from a sense of like people, people don't want to similar to what I talked about previously with the Mr. Girl thing, where people online bashing you can hurt you. Um, That can happen for people. Just uh, people, um, especially not being able to defend yourself Mm -hmm. uh, adequately, can can hurt you. And so when you put yourself out there, because that's what it feels like, you putting yourself out there, and then you get rejected, it feels like somebody is actively, I mean, somebody is actively saying, well, it depends on the reason, but somebody, um, if they're single, right. And you know that they're single or whatever, it is somebody actively saying that I'm not in the right place at the moment, or I, um, you know, my life can't handle that right now, or you do not meet my criteria yes. for somebody that I would want to be in. And that feels bad. That feels like a bad thing because you feel like you're putting yourself out there. And you're like, well, I believe you are the right kind of person for me. And then you are saying to my face that I'm not the right person for you. And that feels bad for people. And I feel like independent of the consent thing, that can be where that backlash can come from, where it's like they do then want to defend themselves Mm -hmm. and be like, and kind of cope because I'm sure you know about the trope of um, like dudes walking up to women and being like, yeah, I want to take you out and them going, no. And then them going, oh, well, you were ugly anyway. Um, yeah. That, that, yeah, that meme. Um, I think it, that's people trying to reclaim what they feel is like a lost, 
kind of uh, dignity or sense of self yeah that of them putting themselves out there so i'm not d does that conflict with your idea of consent at all kind or? no it coincides so because they're thinking about it that way which i think is slightly like the amaranth situation they're just thinking about themselves they're not considering other people because they lack the consideration they don't even consider the consent and I'm saying if you consider the consent, rejection feels like good information. Oh, OK, cool. We're not compatible. What a blessing. Thank you for letting me know. Wouldn't it be worse if she led you on and told you you were perfect for her? Oh, you're yeah, I see. You know you're what I'm saying? Because yeah, I'm looking at it. To the others. Yeah. I, yeah, I'm saying think about others. When you when you approach someone, you're asking them, do you like me? You're not asking them, do I like you? You know you like them. That's why you're asking them. Mm -hmm. So you need to be able to accept that they might say, actually, no, I don't like you. You know how many times I get to hear that on the internet every day? And apparently mm -hmm. I'm supposed to just handle it. But the world mm -hmm. gets all this like, you know, this excuse of, well, I, you know, uh, I feel this. I don't care. You have mm -hmm. to be an adult and live in an adult world. I'm not talking about teenagers. You have to live in an adult world where rejection is a part of reality from jobs to houses to boyfriends. Mm -hmm. And then you have to you have to have compassion when you're dealing with people and say, you know what, you have the right to reject me. Like my partner and I are really committed right now. Mm -hmm. But until there's a ring on this finger, he has the right to end this relationship without me feeling any way about it except sad. Because okay. I give him this environment, this safe space to say, Brittany, I love you. I think I'd be better off on a different journey. And I have to go, fuck, that sucks. But I fully 100% mm -hmm. support you. Because if I didn't believe in his consent and his ability to live his life how he wanted, then I would just like contradict my whole value system of like people get to do things they wanted. They get to leave you. It's hurtful and it's painful. But people have the right to move on, right? Like they have the right, even if it hurts you, even if it's unfair. Um, I think... I think in a lot of these situations where people do lash out, like the comment or like the understanding that we have about the, the dude that says, fuck you, you're ugly anyway. Yeah. I think that they, I don't think that they're saying that they can't say no. What they're trying to do is when they say no, they're trying to preserve their, their sense of self but what got lost uh, if you believe in consent and you and you you really mm -hmm. don't mind if she says no then what gets lost in a rejection well well so that's kind of the disconnect i feel like we might be having if you believe in consent i don't think that that necessitates that you don't believe something was lost i think mm -hmm. you can feel like it, <clears throat> for instance let's take an overweight woman that's been bashed like like an obese woman that's bashed by you know every aspect of society um because overweight women uh, from my perspective are very horribly treated mm -hmm. um let's take that woman she walks up to me she she asks me out i reject her um i think her feeling like that is a um manifestation of her treatment from most people in society and the hope that she was holding on to that maybe I was going to be different or that, you know, maybe this time it wouldn't hurt or whatever, like the other times. I think that is something that she can respect my consent of saying no, but it hurts that I am somebody just like everybody else in her mind who views that in that kind of cements her idea that um, anybody, let's say I'm, I was like long friends with her, friends for a long time. Um, and, it, you know, it was like one of those relationships where it's like, oh, I think you're such a great person and whatever, like best friends. And that happens. It can, it can make her feel, you know, I think rightfully very bad. And if she lashes out in that moment, I think it makes sense. Um, okay. I don't think we should do it, but I think it makes sense. Okay. Mm. I'm going to, I'm going to push back for okay. two reasons. One, I don't think you have the right to lash out at people because your feelings are hurt. Two, okay. your feelings are valid. They're a chemical thing happening in your brain. And I examine that and I can see it. That doesn't mean you get to hurt people because you've been hurt, but it will happen so we can move past it. No judgment. The thing I have an issue with is when you said like, oh, you're like everyone else. Yes, everyone is like everyone else until you find the one or the person you're compatible with. That's the point of dating is to continue getting rejected until you find the person who is unlike everyone else.
Yeah. Right? I, like that's I, why it's so special. Yeah, I, I agree. Um But and, but like okay, internalize it though. Internalize it as, hey, are you my partner? No? Cool. Thanks. Hey, are you my partner? No? Cool. Thanks. Well, I don't I, I don't disagree what it ought be. I disagree. I agree with your perspective. But I only the way think that you it is because we allow people to lash out versus um, saying you can lash out. But this behavior is a reflection of how you view yourself, not how people view you. Because I if I'm rejected, it hurts my feelings like, oh, I really thought there could have been something there. But I guess not. Oh, OK. Oh, that was never meant to be my person. Cool. OK, I can get over this because I have definitely hit on men who have absolutely rejected me. And I'm like, mm -hmm. oh, and you know what the reason is? You're on OnlyFans. You're a little out there. You're kind of a crystal girl, which is not true. I don't even mm -hmm. own a crystal. But like, OK, <laughs> it's like I get it. I'm woo woo. I watch anime. So guys do not watch. Not all guys watch anime people. Not all guys watch True. anime people. So I'm I am one of those guys who don't watch anime. You know, I liked you so much, but <laughs> no, I have to reevaluate now. But that's what I mean. Like, how could how could I ask a devout Muslim to fall in love with me? How mm -hmm. could I ask somebody who's so against what I believe in to just choose me because I've decided like I need to be chosen? So if we as individuals start rethinking how we see ourselves and our values and not become this, and I was this in my 20s, I'm a badass bitch. I don't need no man. Like they never mm -hmm. even like I'm so good. They don't even deserve. It. I used to have that attitude, too. And then I was like, no, it's not even about that. Are you we good people and are we meeting good people that will facilitate a joy for a long term relationship or a momentary cohabitation? depending on your goals. But we don't yeah. think about it like that way. We think about how the world makes us feel instead of how we are gonna tell the world we feel, which is normal, um, which is so normal. Like I know you have to go through it, but I'm saying on the other end of it, when you're healthy, you should have a more mature outlook of life when you get there. So I don't feel like we disagree. I, I'm, I agree that you're, the manner in which you're describing is more healthy. Okay. What I'm saying when people it's like normal for people to lash yeah, out. I agree. It's that I think that oh. when your way of interacting with it is more exceptional than, or excuse me, more, more healthy <laughs> is, uh, than, than more um, introspective. <laughs> yeah. Honestly. Like that, but that's what um, I mean. That's this journey of introspection. The reason I share the levels is because I think people absolutely can do it better than they've been doing it if they want to, but no pressure. Um, I would say, I would say there is pressure from my, not from mm. you, from me, there would be, because I think it not only helps, I'm not going to say your level system, but right. let's just agree on, uh, because I don't know, like you know the intricacies. Yeah. I would agree on certain things that maybe we could both come to an agreement on uh, about like introspection in general, yeah. like um, being something that people should you know, partake in. Um, these are things that uh, you should do if you want to live an easier, uh, well, easy in some ways, um, e healthier life. Mm. Um, not only for yourself, but for other people. Um, I think you can be a healthier person when it comes to your interactions, the knowledge that you have on things like the rejection and how to handle that um, as a human being if you do more of this work, but if you are unwilling to do the work, then I think that you should um, not be engaging in these actions in that way, because you, you talked about, um, and I wanted to address this after you talked about the lashing out. Do you think that if you are somebody who has reason to believe that you are incapable of taking rejection without lashing out, like yelling or making disparaging comments, do you even think that you should be asking people out in the first place? Because I believe in harm reduction, probably not. I would say find people like Kyla who run dating shows where you can practice with consenting partners and give yourself a safe space to lash out because you're still learning not to do that. So if you have formed a habit or a trauma response that leads you to lashing out, no problem, we can work around that, but find people who will consent to help you through that process. So I yeah. would agree with that. Yeah. It's like, ultimately I'd love, cause I can't, that's the problem, right? Like m dating is naturally a part of the game. And I dated when I was unhealthy and that unhealthy relationship led me to knowing what a healthy one could look like. Yeah. So that's exactly. the other thing too. But maybe some people who are self-aware enough to know they'll do it <laughs> can then, um, find communities to then practice dating with. Yeah. Well, that's why I would say that there is pressure. Mm. to try and be <clears throat> introspective because i think you get to that point where you are self-aware where you are 
knowledgeable about like, hmm, is there a way I can take rejection better? Is there yeah. a healthier way? I think you have to introspect. To yeah, do I do too. Um, I just think it's so, really uncomfortable. Yeah, I agree. It's not a, it's not like an easy process um, mentally to go through questioning whether or not you, in any given arrangement, you, there might be something you can do to better it. It's easier to just say other people are the problem. Yeah. Um, um, and so I would say to that end, I would say there is a, a kind of demand for people to do this, not mm. only for themselves, but for other people. Like if you just want to live in a, a, a I say easier life, what I mean is healthier life mm. because it is, like we said, it's, it's work. Oh, um, yeah. And so if you want to live a healthier life, you know, you should do these things. Yeah. That's the problem is like if you want to, like I don't want to force people to be healthy because like that's not coming from them. But I will say that I have boundaries with myself. So an example is like my friends when they're really going through it, like during COVID, two of my friends just had problems I couldn't deal with. And so I was like, I love you all so much. You need to go see therapists for this. This is so beyond my pay grade. Like, I don't even know as yeah. your friend how to help you. This is like mm -hmm. psychology. This is like literal academ academia. You need to go see a professional. And they both did and it worked out really good. But that happened, nice. that was about me putting down boundaries of I'm gonna fail you as a friend if you keep coming to me because I don't know how to help you. Like that's yeah. me admitting I am lacking. And I don't think people also want to admit that. They go, no, 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 come to me. Don't go to a therapist fuck therapist come to me and it's like well you're just my friend who like you know we clap nails together and we like mm -hmm. that's not the same you know p.s can i check in with your spoons are you doing okay because i know you're sick yeah i'm fine okay i'll i'll i'll, I'll stop it okay. if i'm feeling out of it okay and yeah just that way everybody knows i wanted to do this periodically through it i'm not talking this way um out of like just because i talk this way like it, i'm sick so if you think I sound weird or like I'm modifying my voice, it's because I'm sick, not because I'm like intentionally modifying my voice. Okay. Yeah. Um, do you like, but, like, do you think it's interesting how much our ideas are sort of uh, matching up a little bit? We are just, we're maybe, I feel like we are saying similar things, if not the same things. Um, it doesn't really surprise me. Mm -hmm. um, I think the values, well, I mean, yeah, it doesn't really surprise. I was kind of coming into this conversation. I mean, I told you that I was kind of like almost expecting this to be kind of fast. Mm. And the reason why is because I felt like it was very possible that there was a miscommunication happening based on when you came into the YouTube chat, how you were talking made me feel like this person is is going to be a little bit more there's more to the explanations of their actions than I had previously thought. So if you would have asked me just watching the Mr. Girl Live Loon video, would um, this be going the way that it did? My answer probably would have been no. Mm -hmm. But um, after engaging with you the short period that I have and hearing some of the people in my chat say, oh, well, you know, her opinion on this is that, or it's more similar to that. It's like, okay, I kind of, kind of knew that this situation was gonna yeah was gonna bear out to be a little bit more reasonable keep in mind though you did create the environment to make me feel safe enough to because i was watching you already and i was like oh mm. he's like talking about me and i was like watching it and then i was like oh he's being like based or like oh he's being fair or like oh that's like a very mm. like you know that's a very balanced thought so I mean, you and you created the environment for me to feel good enough to just like be myself Right. Like mm. you didn't create an environment where I felt like I had to be defensive. So the 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 talk about a symbiotic relationship, like that's why I say like the world is chaotic because we're chaotic as people. But if you create mm -hmm. the right and facilitate the right environment, you can bring out a better outcome and a better side yeah. of people. And so you yeah, like I'm glad you did that because it allowed this to happen. And I'm really I'm liking this conversation. This is a good one. Yeah, I feel like it's productive. Yeah. Um I also just feel like um, you're someone I haven't really heard much from in regards to what you believe more mm -hmm. than people just attacking the level system or the bubble system. But um, I feel like now would be a decent time to talk a little bit about if you have some time about the uh, level system. Yeah. Do you, what do you, what is that? Because like mm -hmm. I said, when I came in, I have no real conception of what the level system is. Okay. So the level system is an observational tool 
for okay. introspection and to reflect on extrospection. It's a conversation with the self and it's a tool for the individual. It is not a tool for like communities. I created it with a co-author of mine who like likes to remain anonymous. He and mm -hmm. I had gone through these crazy journeys and we came together one time and we said like, hey, do you know what I'm talking about when I say X? And he was like, yeah, do you mean like this? And I was like, yes. And then we realized like we had had like similar experiences. And so we started to like name the levels. At first, he wanted to call it like actual names, like Aquafina. And I was like, okay, no. <laughs> first of all, I'm going to forget them. And I'm not going to remember what they are. I can't even remember mm -hmm. my favorite anime characters. No, one, two, three, four, five. Like, please. So then we did one through five, which of course we knew would force people to feel like it was hierarchical, but that's normal. Mm -hmm. So then I was like, it's fine. I'll explain it to people. And so at first, we were just explaining it to family and friends. We weren't mm -hmm. actually explaining it to like the world. When I went public with it, it was a very like nerve wracking. Should I do this? Is it going to sound crazy? But I like to think that the world is unexplainable, but explainable. So I don't know why we're here. I don't know that we, any of us know why we're here, like factually. And so mm -hmm. I have to assume that everything we know about reality is sort of a bubble and the bubble created lore and fantasy and and like fables basically to explain reality and then some of us decided oh some of this is silly and some of this is right and whether it's academia or religion both have gotten things wrong so i had to sit there and think well what does it mean to know the self if the world doesn't know itself and then i had to go through that journey so then we created the levels based off of sort of people in our lives so anecdotal as fuck very subjective so mm -hmm. we <clears throat> we had um twos those were easy we had uh fours and we had fives so then our friend was there and they were like, well, I don't feel like I'm a two or a four. I kind of feel like I'm in the middle. And I was like, oh, a three. And then we were like, what's a three? We're like, it's a bridge. And then we were talking to our friend and we're like, well, why do you do this? And they're like, well, I don't know. And I was like, well, why do you feel this way? And so we started asking questions. And then I was like, well, wait a second. What about this person? Where would they go? And they're like, ah, oh, they're kind of useless, like in every way. And there's no reason for it. So maybe they're like ones. And then we made ones. And then I was like, well, what's a five? Because I wasn't a five and they weren't a five. So I was like, well, what's a five? And we're like, well, it'd be this person. And so we were like using anecdotal subjective people in our lives to represent archetypes and tropes for the levels. And then we formed a concept around it. And then we know it's a living thing. So now it's my thing. He like he's like done. He's like good. He's going on his own journey now. Um, now it's <laughs> me. And mm -hmm. I think it's a great tool to humanize people and to become less violent because before integrating the levels into my like the way I think about the world, I genuinely was like, fuck this person. I hope they burn. I hope they burn in hell. Mm -hmm. Like, how dare they be anti LGBT? How dare they do this to me? How dare they come from my bag? How dare they do this? Like, you know, and I was like angry. I had anger issues my whole life growing up, just anger. And then I realized like, well, wait a second. They're probably doing it for the same reason when I was a conservative, I did what I did. I'll tell you the most embarrassing fact about Britney. Mm. <sighs> my discourse already bullied me for it. So like, it's fine. <laughs> when I was like 18, I wrote a book when I was a conservative. I was like on Rush Limbaugh's show. I knew Sean Hannity. I was meeting Glenn Beck. I was like, Rush. I was like, wait, in politi really? Yeah. Hardcore. I was like in oh, politics. Shit. I loved politics. I was going to be the next fucking female president conservative person. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, such cringe. And I wrote a book and in the book I said, there's a chapter I wrote, oh my God, about how women can't be president because they have periods. Oh boy. And I was, did that. I was dead ass. Sure. Oh. This was reasonable. Okay. Mm. It's so cringe. And the grammar in that book is so bad. Please for the love of God. Like it's so cringe. Okay. <clears throat> so then I started going through conservative bubbles. I became friends with radio hosts and I started to see how they were behind closed doors. And I was like, you mm -hmm. guys are liars. Like, you're mm -hmm. lying. One radio host pretended to be in Mexico and would be like, mm -hmm. the cartel's next to us. And he's, oh, he's banging on the door. Shut the door. Shut the door. He was in his house drinking mimosas in Ramona. <laughs> he was absolutely not in Mexico. And so I'm like sitting here like, how do you live with yourself? Like, how do you go to bed mm -hmm. at night knowing this is what you're doing? And he's like, this is just what everyone's doing, Brittany. And I was like, there's no fucking way. Then I left conservatism and joined the SJW liberal feminist groups and they were doing the same mm. shit. Same mm -hmm. fucking shit. Same people. The woman who got me out of politics actually was heavily into politics. And she looked at me one day and said, what are you doing this for? And I said, to help humanity. And she was like, are they helping you? And I was like, no, but that's not their job. My job is to help them. And she goes, is it? She goes, doesn't it feel funny that our organizations we've all been a part of? And she's like a woman of color. 
She was like, mm-hmm. isn't it funny that the same people that say they're my people fighting for me are the same ones that throw me under the bus in 2.5 seconds? And she was a liberal, mm-hmm. like a leftist. Mm-hmm. And I was like, bro. So then I got rejected from feminist groups. I had my whole thing with uh, Natalie Wynn, ContraPoints, and Lindsay Ellis. And I had my whole falling out with them on the internet. And they bullied me into a corner. I don't know, I, I don't and they're know very famous leftists. They're very famous feminist lesbian leftists. Well, no, leftists. I, I know oh. ContraPoints, but oh, okay. I, I don't know anything about that situation as well. It wasn't a big deal to anyone but us because it was like affecting my life and they know what they did and they did what they did and it's fine because I know why mm. they did it. And they did mm-hmm. it because that's how their world is. Cutthroat, cut people out, bash them, spread rumors, move on. Like that's the <laughs> method. So then I was asking mm-hmm. myself, well, if none of the communities that were supposed to be advocating for me are doing it, what are we doing? And so I started to realize like it's a bubble, right? It's like a belief system and a cultural bubble. So then I started to examine myself and say, am I a part of this problem? Am I doing the same fucking thing? And I was. I was doing it, but not in that way. I was doing it from more of a Slytherin Gryffindor pride perspective of I'm smarter than everyone and everyone's stupid. And that's why they're they're doing this. So mm-hmm. I decided, no, I was the idiot. And I was the person who thought I had the answers for 8 billion people. And that was my first mistake. And so I realized I wasn't as introspective as I thought I was. And so I had to ask myself, what does it mean to be introspective? So then I had like my bubbles popped and I was searching from group to group. So the levels are a journey of reflection into the self. They are meant to help you ask yourself, (laughs) do you actually know that you have the answers or do you believe you have the answers? So the key to the levels is knowing and believing. So I believe in I believe in like quite a few things. I know very little. Like I know basically nothing. Okay. And so I think knowing that makes me a five. And a five is a person who I think goes through a journey. And recognizes how little they know about life and how what they know about life is that it's never as clear as what people think it is. So the person could be going through a bad moment and maybe the cheating is bad, but maybe they're not a bad person because they cheated. Maybe a person who serial cheats is a bad person, but it's not even about the cheating. It's about the dishonesty. Maybe, maybe, maybe it's like finding out the reason why truly. So does that kind of make sense? Like the levels aren't a weapon. I don't want anyone to start identifying as a fucking leveler in their Twitter bio. Bro, I'll, I'll literally <laughs> off myself. Like I'll go crazy. I don't I don't want to be that. I don't want to be a cult follower or a leader. I don't want to be I want to say that you're you can be joyful in any bubble, but you got to know why you're there and how to help your community. Mhm. But okay. Yeah. Does that kind of make sense? It does. My only issue is wouldn't most people, based on how you described what a five is, wouldn't most people say they're a five? I think they think they're uh, a five. Okay. But I think if I push them into a corner, they uh-huh. would never be able to actually back that up because they would start saying things like, you shouldn't say slurs. They hurt people's feelings. That's not objective. Next. Oh, you should always want to promote like transness in children. Why? That's not objective. What about the kids who aren't trans? Next. Look, oh, God is always real. Next. Oh, if you get stuck. If you think the construct of your reality is nothing more than a construct, you've already lost the, the the message in a lot of ways. So we don't know what we're doing here. We literally don't know that. We pretend to know, and it's great that we do that to keep ourselves sane, but we don't actually know. So we have to assume everything we've made up is sort of about the construct of why. So why why do white some white people hate black people? Well, because they have fucking ideas that are skewed in the construct of the bubble. Like it's not even based off of reality. It's based off of their version of reality. Right. So racism itself is so illogical and yet people do it, but it makes no sense. So you can't even describe it to them logically because they won't get it because they're in their feelings. They haven't popped the bubble of their feelings. Um, so let me go back to what you said about. Um, uh, you said next after a hypothetical statement about, well, we shouldn't say slurs because it hurts people's feelings. Mm-hmm. Um that could why be true. is that? Yeah. Why is that not a five? Well, you implied that it wasn't a five thing to say. It's not what a five would say. I think a five that- could have a personal bias towards a slur and get their feelings hurt by it. I do okay. not think objectively outside of the bias or your construct, could you be offended at word sounds? Well, y- yeah. Right. Okay. Oh, but you say oh. that. Yeah. Right. Then why do we base all of reality off of a construct? Because it's comforting and it reinforces our biases, not because we're being introspective and stopping it. What do you mean? So if I say to you, we shouldn't say slurs because it makes people's uh, material conditions or many people's material conditions worse because they feel unwelcomed inside of certain areas. Based off the construct of the environment, correct? I guess. What do you you mean by based on? 
um uh so you know how like my parents i'm pretty sure would not know what a confederate flag is yeah like i'm i'm almost positive i could call my mom right now and be like mom what is this she'd be like i don't know a flag like it could she might know but you know how some people really know what it is know the date of it and why it matters and who did what and what what the clan mm-hmm. like i that's a bubble of information where they think everyone should know this and i'm like why would i know that so why mm-hmm. would a word be universally the same experienced in every bubble it wouldn't be which makes it subjective which makes it only reasonable to be offended by it if it can offend you which it should in certain circumstances because it might but it doesn't mean that it's a universal experience wait so when because maybe this is just a miscommunication that yeah i i think when Maybe you disagree. I think when people say we shouldn't say slurs because it's going to negatively affect people, I don't think they mean that that you know a white person is going to feel you know ostracized by the N word. I think what they're saying is because generally speaking, that saying like the N word or something, you know, the F slur, whatever, yeah, um, is going to make certain people feel unwelcome. Not every person. So I I don't disagree with the idea that, you know, the slurs are going to make um, not everyone is going to have the same experience or even a negative experience with a slur at all. Mm-hmm. Um, but I don't think that's what people are usually saying when they say we shouldn't say slurs. So when my mom says not to say the F word in her house, mm-hmm. like any of them, my mom, my parents don't use slurs. They do not cuss. Mm-hmm. The only time my dad cusses is if he's in the shop with the boys and he's getting really pissed at work. <laughs> but like in general, mm-hmm. he would never cuss in front of a lady. Like my dad thinks it's very ungentlemanly to cuss in front of women. So like okay. he would never, right? And my mom hates it too. So when my parents say don't say it, it's offensive. What they're saying is I in this context I'm getting my feelings hurt that you're using the F word, like F U C K. Okay. Okay. And I have to explain to my parents, like, yes, in your house, in with you, I will not use this word. But with my siblings, they're okay with it. I even ask my religious mm-hmm. siblings, like, are you okay with me talking the way I talk? And their preference is in their home, no. In my home, yes. So that's how I look at words, all words. is like, okay, what is the context of this word? Like the um, F-A-G word, like the F slur. Mm-hmm. My straight brother came to live with me for a while with my other gay brother. And he was like, you know, I never use the F slur until I started living with you guys. And I was like, yep, because we use it a lot. And I know we're queer Mm -hmm. so we're technically allowed but that also feels like a like a cognitive dissonance to me are we allowed to use it because we're gay are we allowed to use it because we're in a home full of our siblings and we all know who each other is and we know that we're all safe if you're asking me i mean i think i think um kind of both can be at play so from my philosophy um i think you can say slurs with company that you um have done enough vetting and understand that the place that they're saying it from isn't to marginalize people. Um, I feel okay with that. And, you know, I do that um, myself. Uh, But also, I would say the reason, uh, I would say because somebody fitting within that marginalized group can say it with the implication i don't think that like black people can just say the n-word just because they're black Mm -hmm. i think that the reason why they can say it is because we reasonably assume that black people are going to understand the context to say it the gravity Mm -hmm. of the word the negative impacts of the word and therefore i would also have to be okay with certain non-black people saying it because if they can understand the context if they do that because that's all i believe the the reason why we allow this person to say it so when a gay person uh, says you know the f slur the reason why i'm okay with that is because at at the jump i am assuming that they have some understanding of why that word is can be painful Mm -hmm. can be damaging and i'm making that assumption yeah And for some people, I'll talk about black people, I feel like that understanding has been shown to not be, have taken place. And I believe at that moment, I can say that certain black people should not say the Mm N-word. I think like Jesse Lee Peterson shouldn't say the N-word because I don't feel like he has a proper grasp uh, and understanding of how damaging that word can be and racism in general can be. Um, So I don't think... 
So if Jesse Lee Peterson said it in my presence, I would not be comfortable with him saying it um, as I would somebody like ABBA. Yeah. Right? Um, because I, I feel like there's just not that understanding or even um, to, to give a, a different example, I'd be more comfortable with Bernie Sanders saying the N word than I would Jesse Lee Peterson. Yeah. Um, uh, because it's all about that, that understanding. Yeah. Um, I agree so, with yeah. this. So this is what I would call like bubble hopping. I would say, oh, when I'm in your bubble in the context of this situation in a bubble, it can be as small as one person or two people like, okay, yeah. What are we doing in this sphere? What is allowed here? What feels safe here? What feels questionable here? Like my dad, when I was younger, he um he used to tell this gay joke. There's the like one gay joke my dad would tell. And it was so funny. And like it needs the F slur to use it. Like that's what makes it mm. funny. And it's a funny joke. And like I always like <laughs> I always like um thought about it when I was younger and I used to be like, are you saying this just to say the F slur? Is that why mm -hmm. you're saying this joke? And then as I got older and I kind of got over my trauma, I was like, oh no, it's just like a funny joke. But also mm. my dad doesn't when he makes that joke, he's not thinking of gay people. He thinks it's funny because of the wordplay. Like genuinely, but I didn't know mm. that until I learned to know my dad separate from what I knew about conservatives. That sounds crazy, but there was a point in my trauma where I couldn't see my parents outside of how I saw conservatives. Like I lost the humanity for my own parents because of the way they had accidentally yeah, traumatized was, me. Yeah, I was going to say, I think based on what you've described, your lived experience has been, I think it makes sense why that would, I could see why that happened. Yeah, right? And so, like, I'm trying to be empathetic, and I know not everyone's living in my bubble or had my experiences. So I am trying mm -hmm. to find, like, a balance. So I agree with you that I think in certain contexts, like, I would – I don't even say, like, cuss words when I'm at Disneyland or around children. Like, if it's not my kids, oh, yeah. I don't cuss. But people mm -hmm. think I'm crazy. They're like, that's bullshit. You should say whatever you want in front of anybody. And I'm like, no. Like, I, I want to keep the peace. I'm not here to try to yeah. – fucking mess with people's kids but that's the thing yeah. is like where do we draw the line my mom would say no gay day at disneyland because gay people are pushing an agenda on children exactly. yeah. and i would say just don't mm -hmm. slur or say cuss words at disneyland just like be mm -hmm. normal but don't make out no pda at disneyland mm -hmm. but then some people think that's insane so again we come back to the problem of <gasps> who has the right answer well i think we probably all do because there's probably a whole group of people that don't mind cussing in front of their kids yeah that's that's probably true um but so I guess without the desire or without people who want to try to push their ethical system onto other people um, in some way, shape or form, um, I don't think we can come to determinations on who has better answers to that, because I, I think there are better answers than others. Mm -hmm. Like, I think we can probably agree it is in is it's a false dichotomy but if we assume a dichotomy between not cussing at disneyland and not ever having any like gay people at disneyland yeah you can probably guess which one is probably a better reality to live in um and so i think without being able to make that kind of determination mm -hmm. that like i actually think I am more right than you. And I think it can even appeal to your own system mm. with how I am more right than you um, by your own argumentation. I, I think without that, that's, I think that's really important. Yeah. So I think, so when you say like, you know, how are we going to say we're more right than another person? I think we can do that. Do you disagree that we can do that? No. Like as people? I agree you okay. can do that. I agree that it's even, I would say that my job, well, my I would say that my job in my calls, if it's the context of the call, is to give them a better way to exist within their own scope of value so they can go home happier, which in turn would make communities happier, which in turn would make the world better because we'd all be happier. So I think mm -hmm. I'm looking at it more like, I just don't like the idea of you have to be like me to be good. I like the idea of using their framework to encourage them to coincide with their values through and through. Like through, like you believe in freedom, then we can't regulate women's bodies. You believe in freedom, then everyone's gotta have a gun. You believe in freedom, then let's talk about it. But the thing is, is that people start to feel a way when you say I'm pro-freedom 
but you want to ban like we have to have a society so we have to have some rules it's mm -hmm. just like de de deciding what the rules should be you know what i mean but we do need to have some rules because that's what makes a society functional and we just have to agree is the rule live live and let live is the rule like if i don't like the way you kiss your husband you're out like what's the rule you know and i think that's where we all that's where the chaos ensues because we don't actually have the answers and i think pretending okay. you have the answers is what drives me a little crazy okay so when you you talk about pretending as though you have the answers is what drives you crazy. Mm -hmm. What do you mean by that? So like if I say to a conservative like we've been appealing to mm -hmm. that thinks that gay people coinciding in or existing openly in society is degenerate. If I say I believe that my opinion is more correct in that that is a bad for way of looking at the world would you say that that is a problem or like because i believe i have more information i believe i have more evidence obviously they believe the same thing um but i believe i can also prove it and and, and so do they so okay. what what is the okay can i can i give you an example that works better with my brain sure okay i have a bestie who's pro cheating Okay. And I'm anti-cheat. Wait, wait, yes. What? Yeah. Okay. Pro, see? Wait. Yes. Pro cheat? 100%. Yeah, I know. See, How you're doing that. Work? See, you're doing this right now. We're going to have, okay, this is it. <laughs> this is fucking my life right now. Okay. So I have a bestie who's pro cheating and I'm anti-cheating. And every time we get into it, he gives these really interesting reasons why cheating is good. Example. He thinks like if you're in an abusive situation, you should be allowed to cheat. And I don't. Yeah, I, I agree with you. Okay, but I think that's the case because two wrongs don't make a right. Uh -huh. But he doesn't think it's wrong to cheat. He thinks you're just taking a new action for a new course in your life. Wait, so, wait. So they think cheating isn't bad because you're... Either pushed into it, made to make a decision, or choosing a different life. Okay, wait. So these are, there's two difference they think cheating is good or they think cheating is neutral like a morally new like it can okay it doesn't, if, he, if i'm wrong he can yell at me later over this but from my understanding uh, he thinks it's good to utilize the tool of cheating to have a better life yeah that's um definitely i think unique um i haven't heard that before Right? Okay, uh, so my rule of thumb is with him, fine, you can be pro-cheating, but if my girlfriends want to date you, I will tell them that you're pro-cheating. And he's like, deal. Because the mm -hmm. women he dates are also in agreement with his worldview enough to respect it to date him. Okay. Right? Yeah, I'd say that's fine. Right. Okay, so it's just like the Fresh and Fit bubble where they have the one opened relationship, the one-sided relationships. I, mm -hmm. there, for every woman, that for every Andrew Tate, there is a woman who is Andrew Tate. Mm -hmm. I believe this. So again, I don't think it's great to do this. I, Brittany, don't like a lot of the ways these men talk about women, but I, Brittany, mm -hmm. cannot actually go in there and tell these women that you shouldn't want this. If this makes you happy, girl, I don't, it would drive me crazy, but fine. Mm -hmm. Same with my friend. It would drive me crazy. If we, if we dated, we'd be two good people who drove each other insane. <laughs> Cause like, I have a very like strict mm -hmm. sense of ethics, like for myself, like my values, like I don't lie. Like that's a big deal for me. Right. Other people, they're like, everyone lies all the time. Yes. In a survival situation, but in your everyday life, why are you lying like that? For what reason? Right. So mm -hmm. why? So again, it goes back to that whole thing about consent. If we want cohesive societies, we have to think about people's ability to even consent within the boundaries of the bubble. What does it mean to live in a society? I wasn't born. Like, I didn't choose to be born. I was forced mm -hmm. into this existence. And I'm okay with it because that's what humans do. And I'm going to do it too to some kid. And I, I hope they come out okay. But, like, I have to do my best with what I have. And what I have right now is a bunch of people telling me they have the answers. And they're still unhappy, still miserable, still confused, still conspiracy theory, conspiracy theory. And I can't. I just don't. I don't want to be in that adventure with them. I don't think it's it's good for me, but I'm not going to tell them to be different because like maybe this is what is going to make them happy. Um kind of relativism but not like light relativism. Light. So then let's let's take a more extreme example. Mm -hmm. Then um let's assume your friend wasn't telling people uh about their position on cheating. Mm -hmm. Um then wouldn't you say that 
would you be would you blame me for saying that that person is in the wrong on that then no because i lecture him all the time about how much i hate it i'm like okay. i i do hate it in the same way that i hate most of the things that like some of the people in my life believe but like it's it, it is i always say my statement i always make it clear how i feel about it okay so and, then, and wait, wait, I have even an extra rule. I tell my friends, if you're sleeping with married people and you introduce me to them, I'm going to tell their wives or husbands if I meet them. So oh, my, do not, oh, I'm that person. I'll blow it up. Yeah, yeah. So my rule of thumb is if you're going to fucking cheat and you're going to put me in a, in a position to lie for you, I won't lie because I do not lie, especially mm -hmm. not fucking about cheating. And mm -hmm. like, not just because I was cheated on. I've always had this rule of thumb, always. My whole life I've had this rule of thumb. And it's only because you cannot ask me <laughs> to change my values to protect you. Yeah, but you can yeah, ask me yeah, to. You can be considered of me enough to maybe not tell me if you know I'm gonna have to. Oh, I'm gonna have to out you now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's my rule of thumb. That's kind of based. Um, uh, I think that. Um, so, the the reason why I ask though is because where are you drawing the difference between that what you're doing communicating to somebody that you think that. Um, you know, their state of affairs could, uh, where the shortcomings could be, where um, they could run into issues mm -hmm. uh, with people. What is the difference between that and pushing your ethical system onto somebody else? Is the difference that, like, you, pushing your ethical system is saying what you're doing is wrong and you should change no matter what? Like, in like, or trying to get like them fired or trying to kill them or trying to hang them or trying to, it's like, I don't want to be oh, violent. Yeah. I want to be able to say, I like my stalker. I just, I had so much anger towards this woman, but now I don't even know why I would be angry at her. Except I'm like, girl, get a life. Like, mm -hmm. I don't want you to go to prison. I fucking hate prisons. I think they're awful places and they're, they're mm -hmm. torture devices. I hate them. I think some people might need to go to prison and that's hard for me to decide who that is. But I, as a Brittany, do not, I want to be able to say, I really fucking hate this about you without anyone needing to hurt you in the process. Because okay. I feel that way. But I feel like most people who say that want you hurt, tortured, prisoned, or, you know, like uh, fired from your jobs. They want you to suffer. And I just okay. don't want people to suffer. Unnecessarily. I, I think I think I understand that position a little bit more. Um I think that I think I am understanding more the disconnect that I had when I was watching your content. And I feel like even when some people watch your content a little bit more now, um I think that the way that you can so now we're we're in a space where i think i've agreed pretty much with everything that you have said i think it's agreeable um now i'm going to talk a bit about why i didn't have this interpretation of you prior to this conversation mm -hmm. um and where i think some people might not have that interpretation as well or this interpretation as well um I think you often will use words that I am more used to than meaning different things, mm. especially in the space that I am in. Um, uh, I think the correct term for, for us would be the bubble that I'm in. Mm -hmm. um, because in this bubble, I am used to when people, I've, I've seen it dozens of times, when people talk about pushing their ethics on other people, it's more of, from a position of not, don't tell me what to do mm. not like a um not like a uh hey you can tell me what you think is wise or unwise about my decisions mm. and then try if i you know still decide to go through with them that you're going to allow me to do that um that's not usually what i feel uh, uh and, and what my experience is in this bubble talking uh with people about it's more of like i don't want people to tell me what to do i don't want to hear it um and when you talk about um uh, uh people pushing the ethical system as well it come off it comes off to me as uh because i've heard this from numerous even very large totally. content creators um and usually the way that it manifests is that 
they're complaining about people making real tangible arguments Mm -hmm. about the wrongs that they are doing and they are unwilling to accept the the arguments and so their 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 way of pushing back against it is like people are pushing their system onto me yeah um in when they aren't even hearing what people are saying is like some of the problematic whatever things that they might be saying that might be getting some people hurt or uh have an unhealthy relationship with authority or their workplace or whatever um and so i think the the language that you use is very reminiscent of other people in the political sphere uh bubble a politic debate bubble it's very reminiscent of people that have different positions than you because i think i think your positions are very agreeable even with a lot of the people in the political uh debate space um but i think that whether or not they actually do them in a agreeable way to you mm-hmm. it's definitely up for interpretation mm-hmm. but um I think the way that you talk about it, at least for me and what I've seen some responses of you is more of a don't tell me what to do. Um, I won't hear the criticism. Um, I don't want to. uh, I don't think that you have the right to tell me whether I'm right or wrong. Um, That's what it feels like, Mm -hmm. because when people have used similar vernacular before that's what they've meant in this space to be honest when i'm defensive i think i am reverting to that headspace out of protection i'll give you a reason i'm crossing my fingers so i can remember when you ask the last question about like Mm -hmm. why is it different i usually wait for people to ask me and give me consent for me to lecture them so i usually that's why i like my calls it's a safe space where someone can have me criticize them and then it's just Brittany. it's not the world i'm never going to record you it's just like me and you and it gives Mm -hmm. them a space but i also try to allow people to move through their feelings like when they feel strongly about stuff it's like okay yeah i see where you're at i'm going to meet you where you are and i'm not going to argue with you anymore so i think for me i try to be strategic versus in the past you ever see those people who just like tweet at the same person every day pay attention pay attention you're the worst you're the worst Mm -hmm. it's like bro can you now i'm gonna on their behalf tell you you don't have the right to tell people how to live so if it Mm -hmm. is a little bit reverting to that rebellious like don't tell me how to live my life but the Mm -hmm. actual reality what's happening is you're violating this person's consent in a public space i understand but i don't need to hear every day that Brittany only thinks life is great because she's heavily medicated i'm not medicated unless you count weed (laughs) <laughs> like then in that case i'm medicated every day girl but like you know what i'm saying like i'm i'm trying to give people an idea of you know when you tell people when you want to help people the road to hell is paved in good intentions so when you think mm-hmm. you're saving someone keep in mind you might just be pushing them back into doubling down and i am mm-hmm. trying to allow people a space where don't double down okay so you're a homophobe. Let's talk about that. Why are we homophobic? Mm-hmm. Is it efficient to be homophobic? It's like, is mm-hmm. this really going to serve you in the long run? Can you maintain your homophobia without killing, raping, or getting anyone fired? Can we talk about what this is? You know, can we talk about the variations? So this is, I think, exactly what's happening. And that's why I'm trying to be less aggressive. And I'm already aggressive. Like, I'm an already aggressive human. So I am trying to be a little bit more like, I don't know, bro. Like, okay, let's talk about that. You know, like, mm-hmm. okay, the same friend that's pro-cheating is super anti-pranks, but I grew up in a bubble where pranks were normal, even if you fuck mm-hmm. up. It's just, like, what happens. But in his bubble, apparently pranks are, like, not a thing. So keep in mind, like, think about that. Just think about growing up in a bubble where, like, pranks aren't a thing. But to me, it's just like, yeah, everyone should do a prank. Go ahead. Oop, you blew a building up. Let's talk about why this prank went wrong. You know what I mean? Let's talk about why this wasn't what should happen, which, by the way, happened at my high school. He didn't mean to do it, but he did blow up the building. And so, Wait, like, really? yeah, legit. He, like, he thought it'd be funny to mix the chemicals and make, like, a little bit of a smoke, but it made a big old explosion. A helicopter came and had to take him out of the school. We had to, like, evacuate campus. And everyone was like, he should go to prison. I was like, okay, he's 15 in a chemistry <laughs> class. Can we please take a chill pill? And he was neurodivergent and he was a POC. And like, I'm just sitting here like, can we please just like give the boy a second? But everyone thought mm-hmm. I was crazy. And I get it because I also used to be the person who like, um, who would like, you know, oh, just throw them into prison. Fuck them. They never deserved a chance. 
And now mm-hmm. I just, I can't be that person. Do you, I'm sorry, one more example. Did you hear about Brittany um, who went to prison in Russia for weed? Like the basketball player? Uh, yeah. Okay. Yes. I don't know her last name, but Brittany, and I follow her because like queer news and like I have to pay attention. My dad, he called me the other day and he said, Betsy, listen to me. I go, yeah. He goes, when you go to travel, because I'm about to travel to see my partner, he's international. He goes, please do not take weed with you. I know you like weed. I was like, dad, <laughs> I promise you I'm not taking, I'm going to go a whole fucking week sober. I promise. And he goes, look <laughs> at me. He goes, Brittany's in prison. That could be you. <laughs> you could be Brittany. <laughs> my dad, 15, 10 years ago, would have been like, fuck Brittany. She deserves to go to prison because, you know, drugs are illegal. Now that his kids smoke, now that his kids do <laughs> drugs, now that his kids have had problems with cops. Who's more sympathetic? Who's more empathetic? Because he understands this could be my child. Sometimes mm-hmm. people need a lived experience. And sometimes they yeah. just need to see a news story. But whether whatever the tool is they need, they still need to get it before they understand. So I think I'm just that patient yeah. person right now. I'm not patient with myself, but I can be patient with people. And this is my only gift to the world is like I can sit there and be like, okay, like one girl called me. I'll tell you that. I'm sorry. I'm just going to scar you with all my calls. One girl called me once and blew my mind. She goes, I was raped. I go, okay. She goes, but I don't hate him. And I was like, ooh, girl, I love this. Let's talk about it. Mm-hmm. What? Let's talk about it. We've done the therapist. We've talked to the cops. We've done all the, Let's talk about what it means to understand why you were raped. And no one's going to have that conversation with her. But I need someone to have that conversation with me. Because sometimes I'm not sure if I didn't do it on purpose getting raped. So mm-hmm. I need someone who can have that conversation, allow me to say shit like that without me representing all of women who've been assaulted. Mm-hmm. But the burden of being a public figure is that now I represent allegedly all women who've mm-hmm. been assaulted. And that's so unfair because I was trying to kill myself. So mm-hmm. I was trying to get attacked. I'm mm-hmm. not like every woman out there. And even though I didn't oh. want it, and even though I have PTSD from it, it I put myself in a situation where I was hoping someone would kill me. Mm-hmm. It's not the same, but it's still rape, right? Like I didn't want it. I didn't want yeah. this, but I wanted to die. I just didn't want to be raped. Like, God, he couldn't have stabbed me. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that was the goal so like you know what i'm saying i'm trying to be that middleman who can say okay let's talk about it because your therapist can't i've been to therapy they're not allowed um do you not think that could present as a problem where people might use it as a supplement or... um i'm too expensive that it would be that's why i'm expensive so i can force them to go to actual therapy instead of me i'm a luxury i'm a privilege i'm a i'm a, on top of doctors therapists the gym professionals i'm the next i'm the okay i've done all the basics but i need something more i'm the philosophy spiritual side but i am most uh, but it does happen so usually what i do is i refund people and i block them and i say hey i, I you know i wasn't really the person you were meant to talk to you you should take that money and use it on a therapist cool so okay so if that same person approached you Mm -hmm. and they didn't do therapy Mm -hmm. they didn't do any of that would you block them and then send them say hey you should go to therapy Uh, what what is that process it it depends because if they're just an adult who goes hey i'm an atheist i left the church i was raped i can't go to god or the church what do i do i'm like well you could go to church it's okay as an atheist to go to church but if Mm -hmm. you're looking for community let's talk about women's shelters women's groups men's groups support groups for sexual assault victims all of that stuff is more of a community resource thing so some people come to me Mm -hmm. just for the community resources because i've been there baby i spent so many times in these women's groups i had to go to them myself because i was getting Mm -hmm. triggered by being around men so i had to go to these groups and so that's usually what they're coming to me for they're not coming to me at that point for therapy or mistaking me for a therapist they're asking me as a resource activist like not that i do activism anymore but i used to they're coming to me as like a sister you know like in the struggle not like a therapist if that makes sense so it depends on the vibe if i do get the vibe that they're coming to me for therapy then that's the vibe of hey bro like just to clarify you know i'm not a college graduate you know i do not have a degree in therapy or psychology or whatever like i don't have a license and they're like yeah 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 I, I know that. I'm like, but do you know that? And then we'll have a conversation about that. And that might take up their whole hour, which then at the end of it, I'm like, do you see how we didn't get anywhere? How about a refund? And you can use this on therapy. Let me know how it goes if you want, if that's helpful to you. Otherwise, I wish you the best. So, you know, I kind of play it out. Sometimes I give people an hour. Sometimes I go over time. I try to see what they need because sometimes that's my, that is my job. Maybe they thought they needed me, but they really needed a therapist. But I don't take like I don't take those people's money because like therapy is very expensive. <laughs> you know. Okay. I don't I don't really think there's any other way that it can be done. I was curious about that because I was like, how do you feel that determination needs to be made? And if I was to try and criticize your process of vetting people as to whether or not 
they should, you know, you shouldn't continue seeing them or in the capacity that they uh, want or say that they want and stuff. Uh, I would pretty much need a real example of mm-hmm. you crossing that line. And I don't have that. You know, it's um, hard too, because like you, you get such unique people that sometimes like, I just kind of go with the flow with most calls, right? Cause they're here for their time, but that's the mm-hmm. cool. I hope it's a symbiotic relationship going back to what we want. I also want to learn from my callers. Like so many of my callers have inspired so many of my podcasts and cause they mm-hmm. have great brains. Like they're so interesting and introspective. So I think that's also it. My audience is older, 25 to 50. Um, they usually grow with me. A lot of them have great jobs. A lot of my callers, like if they're like, they're usually people who like, they know why they're spending the money. Okay. I, maybe once every six months to a year, I get a bad caller, which it lends an issue, but it's not common. Okay. All right. Um, so yeah, I guess then similar to what I was saying before, there's not really, uh, I feel like no matter what, that's going to have to be the system that you use to understand whether or not talking to the person you're talking to is a good or bad idea. Yeah. So, so I can't, I can't, uh, even if I wanted to, I couldn't even criticize that without a real tangible example. If you have some Um, in the future though, if you come up with ideas, send them to me because I'm always trying to my, here's what my partner said. He said, I'm too nice to people. He said it confuses people when you're so nice to people. And I go, but I'm nice to everyone that way. He goes, exactly. Which is why all your neighbors want your phone number, which is why the people at Walmart think you're friends. And I was like, yeah, but what do you want me to do? Be a bit like, I can't like, it's just like who I am. So in some ways I have to ask myself if being myself is actually going to hurt me. Is that why my stalker stalked me? Cause I was nice to her. Should I be less nice to people? So I don't get stalkers. Should I do the Ludwig thing and say, you none of you are ever my, my friends, but that's just not who I am. That's not, that's a lie. And I can't lie. I try not to, okay. you know, outside of survival yeah. situations. Mm-hmm. Um, do you recognize that? So part of me bringing up the Ludwig situation was to illustrate that I think that um, it's pretty important for content creators to tell their audience who probably a fair amount of them have an unhealthy relationship with them. This is primarily more for large content creators um, who don't really have the um, the ability to kind of individually go through the people and be like, yeah, I don't have a good relationship with you. I don't have it. Um, mm. Do you not think that it is wise to tell for pretty much anybody, their audience that, they are not friends with their audience. So when you said what you just did about um, the Ludwig situation, would you not say that to your audience, that you're not friends with your audience or that there's only very specific few people you're friends with in your audience? Ah, yes. My audience is not a collective hive. I don't call my chat chat. Like, you know, I don't call them like, hey, chat. Like, that's weird. I usually say everyone's usernames out loud. I identify Mm. them. I let them know that you are a person and I'm going to remember you next week because I have a small audience. I get the luxury of having a small community. And I also have worked in like activist groups and community groups. So it's not a first for me. It happens everywhere. Parasocial issues, misunderstanding connections happens everywhere. So for me, at least, I haven't been able to escape it. So what I do is I have certain sayings on my channel. I bet the I bet my audience could literally recite them right now. We're open, but we have boundaries. Consent matters more than anything. So consent goes into this too. I want to stay a content creator, but if I get stalked enough or harassed enough or enough callers who are abusive towards me, I will just leave the fucking internet. So I do Mm -hmm. sort of form a understanding of Britney's mental health and sanity has to be number one. So you have to respect the consent boundaries. And in return, through a symbiotic relationship, I will consider your feelings. I will consider how I talk to you. I will hear you out. If you have criticisms about me, you can post any comment you want. You can do a lot of things. I have allowed people who have been past callers to have other calls with me for free if they felt like, hey, I really felt like I didn't get what I needed here. And I feel like a little bit like uncomfortable. I'm like, great, let's talk about what uncomfortable means because I know I'm doing everything within my power to be like within my values. And I can't do much more than that. But I also know that I've learned earlier, you said something that stayed with me. Um, You know how audience, like people will call their audiences like family. Yeah. When yeah. I was younger, I called everyone fam. I was like, hey fam, what's up? What's going on? And then somebody said to me, when you do this, Brittany, you make people think you're manipulating them. And I was like, oh, 
I was doing it so you guys wouldn't stalk me because we're like family and you don't stalk family. Mm -hmm. And then she was like, that's not what people are hearing. So I stopped doing it because I didn't mm -hmm. want, I admit it wasn't what I intended. So I stopped doing it. But I used to, hey fam, what up fam? Everybody's my fam. You're my family. And you're right. Mm -hmm. Like oh, that person was right. Eventually it didn't help. And I don't mm -hmm. want to be stalked. I want to be respected and I want my consent to be understood. And in turn, I will do the same. But I think um, I think I'm doing my best. But if anyone has any better suggestions, I would be down for it. But I just I I think that I live in a very real world where like, yeah, you date viewers or you meet your husband that way or you meet your best friends that way. So I couldn't say like that individuals in my audience couldn't become those things. Though for Brittany, and I'll say this out loud so everyone who's listening knows, my inner circle is currently full. I have absolutely mm. the perfect number of inner circle people, and I'm not looking for anyone to get closer to me than a nice friend that I see on occasion or that I talk to very rarely or that we discuss philosophy with. But I actually don't have the spoons to love someone unconditionally um, in addition to the people I already love unconditionally. So everyone okay. else is conditional past the inner circle. Okay. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I would just say that um, do you recognize that even the simple statement that a viewer could, if you had the spoons, um, a, a caller or someone could mm -hmm. get to the point where they're a friend or, um, you know, a deeper relationship or, you know, inner circle, if mm -hmm. you had the spoons, do you think just the, even, do you understand that even just that, that statement opens people up to have an unhealthy relationship with your stream that there are people that will do that just simply based on you saying that yes i understand that stating a fact of reality could cause people uh -huh. to have an unhealthy relationship with it okay and right. that that is one of those facts that some I, people I, would granted unjustly use to potentially have an unhealthy relationship with your stream. Totally. And then um, that is the only, that's like the hugest downside to this job. Like if somebody asked me what's the worst part, it's not me having no health care because I don't have a business or me having to pay out of pocket mm. or me having to, it's the people who misunderstand my boundaries. That is the mm. worst part of this job. Hands down. It's the only part of this job that makes my parents freak out on my behalf. It's the only part of this job that makes my brother scared for me. And so I absolutely understand that, but God damn, I can't stay away. It's worth it. I'll go to stalker court a billion times if I have to. Just please don't kill me. <laughs> don't rape me. But mm -hmm. I, I really love this job because it's it's given me the greatest opportunity to meet the love of my life, to meet my best friend, to meet women in business that now I have connections with and we can do projects in the future with. I want to write a book with one of my callers who like is now becoming my friend. I was like, we need to write a book together. Like she's mm -hmm. the most amazing person. And I just never would have met her if I wasn't honest with my intention of wanting to meet people through this job. Because that's it, that is a goal is to meet like-minded adults who want to talk about ideas and have philosophy friends or people we see. That's why we run... Um, we do professional yoga on my Discord. We do philosophy group events. We do like discussion events. Like the point of it is to create an ecosystem where people can bring out ideas, talk about them and be very serious, but also very casual about their beliefs. You know, throw things at the wall and see if they stick. But of course, like um, that's why we charge $10 for the Discord. Like I charge $10. It's to vet out all the trolls or dangerous people. Like I have never had an honest to God issue on my discord about like Nazis or racists or like those people will not pen spend $10 to come into my group. So I've been so mm -hmm. fortunate to build these barriers to Brittany that have allowed people to naturally be vetted out. And so I, I think I, I think the system is working. I think it's the best one right now, but if anyone has a better suggestion, I'm so open. Okay. Yeah. I think, um, I think that's uh, without having a specific instance of any wrongdoing or something, I don't think that um, I could make any argument that would assail uh, your point on that. Uh, I have no interest in doing it. Do you but, think my stalker is um, an example? Like, do you think that, well, I mean, I've been doing calls for years, even before the levels. Like, do you think my stalker is a good example? Of like how that could be bad, like isn't that a real life example? I mean, it, it could be if I had re like evidence to show that you did something wrong to lead. Oh, I think you could do, to lead them could on. Do, yeah, I think you could do everything right and get a stalker. Yes, okay, and that's okay. That that's what I feel like. I feel like I'm really trying to do everything right, and once in a while I have to deal with someone who's fucked up, 
And I'm okay with yeah. that. I hate it, but I'm really okay with it. It gives me a lot of anxiety and I cry about it. But like I said, I'm really good at crying into my pillow. <laughs> um, yeah, no. Um, my point of earlier bringing up uh, that, do you think that um, even though you, you know, just a mere statement that you could have, develop a relationship with a uh, caller or something? Um, give me one second. You're good. Um, yeah. Uh, do you think that uh, when it, when I earlier stated that um, it was meant to just uh, ascertain whether or not you recognize that it, it can have a negative effect on people, not whether or not you should do it? I think you should be honest yeah. about that, and we should, we can be honest about that. But uh, I think we also need to you know communicate to people that you shouldn't be going into um calling into shows with the hope that you are going to develop into a greater relationship with people for sure um, independent of it's whether or not it's online sex workers or not um i don't i um as i said previously i don't think that uh this criticism applies only to sex workers um i think it would apply to anybody who has an engagement with <laughs> Um, you know, like I said previously with the person that contacted me, um, I think and it can happen to anybody where somebody can develop a, a relationship that might be potentially pretty bad. For sure. Um, 100. Okay. So with all of that being the case, I think the only thing that I really have for you is what I previously stated about there is maybe not clearly maybe i am an anomaly in this um i think there are ways that you communicate that imply something or a way a manner of thinking that is not actually what you are um because when i listen to you i feel it's getting very heavy implications mm. that you were somebody who was um like I said, not open to criticism, that um, the mere idea that I that I got the interpretation that what you were saying was, I have an ethical system, you have an ethical system. And because we both believe our systems are um, at least valid, mm -hmm. that um, there we can't yeah, yeah. have a disagree I disagreement and come to. Right. And so um, I'm not sure if I am an anomaly in that. Um, but I've got that interpretation from you. And after talking with you, um, I realized that is not the case and that pretty much everything that you said, I agree with. I can't think of anything that I disagree with outside of like the way, the manner in which I would say what you're trying to say. For sure. Uh, I would say it differently, but that's not, that's inconsequential to me. Um, because I can just have conversations like this and it can be the disagreement can be dissolved in moments in comparison to what ethical disagreement would be um, something else. So I feel satisfied with how this conversation has gone. Is there um, anything you want to address to me or talk about further? Um, I just want to like say it again that you created the environment that allowed this conversation to take place, that mm. you have because of who you are, allowed me to also uh, expand on how I'm saying things, but you are right. And in the future, if you come up with any bright ideas about how to make things more efficient, I love efficiency. I'm an ENTJ, not that that means anything. So please tell me because that's what I want to know. And for the audience listening, like you guys, like tell us in the comments, let me know if there's something we missed and we'll just like, I'll talk about it again. But I think this is what I was 1000% hoping for. With somebody who is willing to just treat me like a person and talk to me and allow me to explain my ideas and then see that I feel like I have a very normal take, but it sounds extreme because you're right. My language is quite, uh, Kyla calls it the Britney dictionary, mm. like Britney vocab. It's very different. So in my own bubble, right? I think everyone lives in a bubble, even fives. And I think that my bubble is somewhere I feel really good in, but yes, my language is awkward. <laughs> so thank you for um. giving me a space. <clears throat> yeah um it was good talking to you i feel like um i feel like uh you did well to help me understand your position in a way that wasn't 
um, unnecessarily combative. Um, and thank God for that because I don't have the voice for that. <laughs> for <laughs> if, sure. you, if you if you wanted to fight, you'd you'd probably just win on the <laughs> on the rhetoric alone. I just couldn't fight back, um, which is kind of part of the reason why I didn't cancel this um, is because I knew that there was a possibility that that could happen, but I didn't think it was likely. Mm. Um, I knew that if it did get to that point, I wouldn't be able to have the back and forth, but I just didn't think it was going to get to that point. No, um, I'm so glad it and, didn't. Like it's, yeah. I, it's gotta be our person, wherever our personalities are the same, I guess they are overlapping right now. Maybe like you have a very lovely, warm demeanor. Like you're very like safe feeling to me. So I'm like, Oh, easy peasy. Mm. Like he'll just hear me out and he'll decide. You know, so mm. it, it's a combination of that. But I am sorry you're sick, and I really hope that you do get better. Because I know as a YouTuber, Twitch streamer, that sucks. Yeah, that yeah, it's not great. <laughs> That's like, like the said, no. Not, not, <laughs> not having a healthcare provided kind of sucks. Yeah. Um, but yeah. Um, uh, yeah, I I wish you well. Thank um, you. I I think at the moment I'm ready to end it off here. Are you cool. ready? Good. Yeah, this feels great. I'm going to stay on to talk to my people and just like give them okay. a good farewell. But thank you so much for this. And I really hope we get to talk again soon. Yeah, I hope so as well. All okay. Right. We'll um, be well. Yep. You have a okay. good one. Talk to you soon. Bye. Talk to you later. Yeah. Bye. Stuck in my head, in real life while I'm bed, my belly's being fed, and I'm okay. I'm just fine, yet all I do is whine, not to you in my mind, cause I know I don't make sense. I've been nothing but blessed, so why's my life a mess? Please tell me, cause I'm sick of thinking, yeah. Sick of reaching out for the truth And living life as a fool Dun, 